everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Fortress Of, a podcast about movies and TV shows and video games and lots of pop culture nerd things. My name is Oscar. I'll be one of your hosts today. And with me, per usual, are two of your other hosts. We have Alex and Devin here today. What up? Yo, yo. Uh, yes, listeners. Uh, Brian was feeling under the weather today. So for one thing, we, we hope he gets better soon. Hopefully we'll see him next week. Mm-hmm. Um, but how are you guys doing today? I'm I'm doing good. Feeling good. Yeah. All is well. Absolutely. We're excited to talk about some of these things. We got a lot of big things to talk about. Yes. Yeah, a lot of a lot of amazing trailers coming out right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um so with that, should we just hop right in cuz it might be a big one. We got a lot to talk about. Let's oh, get yeah. in. Let's start with our first segment of the week. News talk. So, the first trailer for Avatar 2. I don't remember what the first Avatar was because it was a decade ago. <laughs> was, did it have a name? I think it was just Avatar. I think it was just Avatar. It was, but it, it's just making a joke that it's been a decade since that first movie. At least, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's been, I think, 13 years since that movie came out. It's been a long out. ass time. Mm-hmm. Long, long enough for them to re release it in theaters before this one comes out, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, I was going to bring that up. They're, they're going to release it in September. I think, well, maybe one, to get re- people to fucking remember what the hell happened yeah. and two <laughs> i definitely think K- james cameron wants to steal back the box office record from uh, F- uh, avengers endgame Ooh. Um, yeah, he, he had that. it for a long time with titanic and then he beat his own record with the first avatar but then endgame yep. toppled it wait do those stats count that's not fair you can just re-release a movie anytime yeah you want. it's kind of it's kind of messed up because they're, they're just gonna lump it into his original sales no, Even though it's yeah, 10 years later. Yeah, because that's they did fair. the same thing with Endgame. Because Endgame didn't originally pass it until it re-released oh. later that year. They re-released it for like a weekend or something in September of the same year. And that's when they got it. And I think th- they did that on purpose as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so James Cameron's probably be like, nah, bitch, give me that shit back. <laughs> wow. Either way, Disney's just, because it's both Disney, right? So they're yeah, just sitting it, there yeah. soaking up all the money. Like, <laughs> Oh, does, does uh, is Disney attached to Avatar? James Cameron's yeah. Avatar? They own it. I think they oh, wow. Time. Yeah. I did not know that. Because uh, it was a 20th Century Fox production, and now they, oh, since they, they bought, bought Fox, wow. they now own Avatar. Holy yeah. cow. That's how Avatar mm-hmm. is at uh, Disney World. Yeah, I didn't but somehow that. Disney's not a monopoly, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they, got, they have, like, eight out of the top ten most grossing films of all time or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, they make, they make the only movies that I go to theaters for, but they're not a monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> even, so. even their competitors, Sony, are partnering with them. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it was originally exclusively only in theaters. So I that's how we, uh, the three of us, originally mm-hmm. saw it because we're as we know we're going to talk about Doctor Strange. It, pr- it premiered before that, so it was cool to see that on the big screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was blown away. Yeah, I was not expecting it, and it's just funny how we went from nothing for like a decade. Like, yeah, it's coming. We're working on it, and then it's not even like they didn't even do like a teaser trailer. Like, oh, Avatar two coming soon. It's like, boom, Full we got trailer. footage. We got. I mean, it's definitely a teaser, I guess, which I yeah, like. I guess it it's is a, a very teaser. There's not thing. really a lot of plot talk talking about, but it's it's like the kind of teaser that's just enough. You know, it's 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 yeah. like a mm-hmm. good minute and a half long or something like that. Some teasers are just like the title sequence, and that's it. Right. Right. Yeah. That's what I, like I would expect something like that before they had something like this. But yeah. it's like no, we we got some stuff done already. So it looks good though. Like I like I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm probably gonna see the first one in theaters in uh, later this year because. I missed the boat the first time around. I never saw the first oh, one. Wow, in theaters. damn, yo, what? talk about an experience! Oh my god, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I kind of want to go back. So I might do that. But you got to see wow. it. You got to see it in three D. I mean, I feel like the, the train has like the hype train has left. But <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. there's a handful of movies that are worth seeing in three D. Yeah, this was definitely and the, one this, of them. This is definitely one of them. That's the thing. Uh, because me and Alex saw Doctor Strange together, so we talked about this and that. Um, after the movies, we were talking about how. I don't know how much more of a jump this one can make. Cause like just Te- judging from the trailer, in my brain, it looks exactly the same. So I yeah. don't like it's hard to tell the difference. But I mean it still looks fucking amazing though. True. Yeah, like yeah. how much better can the graphics get? Like it's just the the advancements they made on the first avatar were so astronomical. Like like they invented right. new camera technology just to shoot the 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 live actors and then translate that into three dimension. Like that's a new technology that they made that other films used and are still using. Yeah. So it's like, I don't think they're reinventing the wheel for this new movie. They're just like in, mm-hmm. making it a little bit, a little bit sharper, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're tackling water a lot this time around with the, right. ti- oh, we didn't talk about the titles, the way of water. 
Um, and it looks good. There's a in particular, there's a shot towards the end of the teaser, which they also released so everyone can see it by now. So you can probably just watch it. Um, where Jake is like he comes out of the water riding like a some creature. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, this movie looks fucking good. (laughs) That water looks good. (laughs) That's some good looking water. (laughs) Yeah. James Cameron saw Uh, so I I have a I have a theory. They're they're gonna do uh I, I feel like James Cameron a while back after the first one came out and was a success, he said publicly that he's not doing any other films aside from Avatar. He's just doing Avatar for the rest of his life, which is yep, you know, pretty crazy and, and amazing. Um I'm I'm excited to see it, but hopefully you the next up, couple but... ones come up more than <laughs> yeah. 10, 20 years. Yeah. In the future, he's only going to get to three at that point, yeah. though. <laughs> but I, I have a theory that he's going to do all the elements, and it's going to be like Le- Avatar: The Last Airbender, <laughs> and somehow, somehow tie it. He's going to get somehow uh, loops M- all M- the way Shyamalan back to be executive producer on the last one. <laughs> the most oh my God, ambitious so crossover good. event ever. Yeah. They just bring in like they do all the Avatar stuff, and then they just bring in like two D like <laughs> Ang, like, <laughs> just like anime level Ang. It's just like right Still. next to like Jake Sully, and it's like. What's going on here? Like, yeah. So yeah. the, the, oh, fir- the first one was all about like flying and stuff. It also had a lot of themes of like walking for the first time because Jake Sully, as a human, was paraplegic. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it could be the first movie was without a title. It could be based on the Earth Kingdom, but I feel like it's more of the Air Kingdom. This one's totally water. Yeah, that kingdom. was definitely air because you saw yeah. a lot. Next two are going to be fire, and then probably Earth after that, or yeah. maybe maybe they'll save fire for last. That that'd be a good move. <laughs> I like this. I like this fan theory. I want to keep. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. keep rolling with this. Fire's just the humans <laughs> win, and they just burn down the entire planet. <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Dark turn. The fire lord strolls in. Which <laughs> I guess talking like the very small little plot details that we can get in here. It looks like are, are a lot of humans left on the planet, yeah, and they're man. like building yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. What's up? Which is interesting. It looks like that. It's that thing where like some of the you know some of the natives work with them. You know, kind of like yeah, kind of like when the conquistadors like some of the the. Uh, Central American people worked with them against the Aztecs, right? So maybe Which to me seems like this is how shit always this is how it goes wrong. You should have left the planet natural and this is how this is how you lose your ozone layer and die. <laughs> right. But yeah, I mean it, I I guess they just kind of keep cuz like I thought when there's Avatar 2, I thought like maybe they'd have like, you know, just the aliens, like just the blue people. Right. For the second one, but it looks like they're just going to go right back to I that mean, conflict. I mean, there were a few like, humans that stayed there at the end of the first one, like some of those good guys that um, were yeah, in the movie. Yeah, but right. uh, I get, there's definitely a lot more. Also, uh, it seems like he has one blue child and one human child uh, in this in this movie. So oh. that's interesting. There's a there's a boy wearing a, a mask that I, I, he hugs later in the movie, and I'm like, I, it seems like that's his kid. So is it is it the one with the dreads? I thought he looked kind of older. I don't know, but he's hugging he's hugging two smaller people at the end of this trailer. One of them mm-hmm. is blue and one of them is Well, they're a human. they're also like like eight or ten feet tall. Yeah. True. I don't know. I feel I feel like uh I feel like they're just people, but that'd be interesting if they had offspring and it'd be really interesting if they were like one of them was human esque and one of them was Avatar esque. Blue. Navi. Blue. That's blue. What it is. Oh Navi. <laughs> I was like, what is the word here? <laughs> The Navi, yeah. No, Jake Sully was fully Navi at the end of the other one because he like right. you know, he transitioned right. his body out of his old body. So his old body's dead. So I think that the Dreads guy could be the one scientist that like his avatar got shot in the battle and then he stayed behind. Yeah. Like the other, you know, mm. uh, you remember the scientist guy? He was in dodgeball too. But that guy, maybe it's yeah. him. I don't know. Listen, I got to say, it must really suck to be one of the humans hanging out with the Navi. Like, how are they going to keep up? <laughs> They're they're running like ten ten thousand miles an hour. They're jumping yeah. off of cliffs and catching birds and flying around, connecting their their hair antenna to yeah, whales. You don't, you don't and then get you're just the like hair. doggy paddling in the ocean. Like, hold on, yeah. guys. <laughs> you can't connect right. to shit. You can't connect to anything in that world. Stop. Oh, hey, hold on. What? How's he? How's he breathing? How's he's he? Got, he's got like a, he had like a they, face they mask had on. The uh, little the mask that they had on. Also, I just found out it is his kid. They had a, there's an article attached to the one we were reading. Yeah, they adopt a human boy. Hmm. Huh. Which to me, it's like, why was there an orphan on this planet? <laughs> how did this, or- how did an orphan get on this planet? I'm sure looking Oh, that's it, interesting. But... Yeah. Huh. His name is Spider. Word. Interesting. What, what gang is he affiliated with? 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> sounds don't like know. sounds like a '90s character, uh, sub sub uh, gangster, does. like a. It sounds Malibu's, like a Matrix character. <laughs> Malibu's yeah. most wanted. But yeah, plot wise, like I feel like they're gonna have to do something different, right? Because the whole first one was like it was so epic in the conclusion of like uniting all the tribes and like you know taking it to the the human fleet and then just having the entire planet like literally wreck them. I mean, what's the sequel to Pocahontas? <laughs> I don't know because that was Pocahontas the first Pocahontas goes so. to England. I don't think oh, I think no. it was a flop. <laughs> and then dies of disease. <laughs> now we come to Earth. Right. It's, it's real oh, dark, real fast. So Yeah. We know how well, this story I'm, goes. I'm excited. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah. I I'm me too. I'm more excited than I thought I was going to be. So yeah, yeah me too. It's pretty, me too. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh next up, another trailer, real quick. Uh the next teaser trailer for House of the Dragon, the Game of Thrones prequel spinoff, uh, came out. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie, when that Game of Thrones theme song kicked in in this trailer, I actually got kind of excited. <laughs> and I was like, man, it might, it, the, the time period might have been enough that I, I get jazzed again about this universe. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see it. It's, it's interesting that it's, uh, you know, more Game of Thrones. I, I feel like it, it, it's, it's uh, beneficial for me to not think about it as Game of Thrones as just like a, a new but similar <laughs> uh, series. But man, does it look like visually look really fucking good? Like I forgot how powerful those those shots were in the original series. Yeah. Like I'm pretty excited to see this again. Mm -hmm. Well, not again, but for the first time. Yeah, just jump back into <laughs> Westeros. I mean, it'll yeah, be fun. Yeah. We all know what happens, you know, like with with Aegon in the in the, the Conqueror. Yeah. But I'm curious. It's gonna go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it is gonna be wild. I'm just curious if they're gonna do like each season will be like a different era of the Targaryens because there's a lot of stories mm. to tell within the Targaryen dynasty, but not all in one lifetime. So I'm, not, I'm curious, but I guess this first season is definitely going to be about Aegon the Conqueror and the two sisters and, you know, kind of like each one of the seven kingdoms that until then was like an independent kingdom. And then he just basically, you know, wrangles them all into, sh into order. So who knows? Yeah. Cause we do get like, there are a couple like name drops in this. Like we hear, um, Rickard Stark is in this. Mm -hmm. He's ne he's kneeling to the Targaryens at that point, along with uh, uh, Bormund Baratheon, which we know Baratheon. So it's uh interesting to see some of these characters' um, ancestors come into play yeah. and how that all goes down. Mm -hmm. Um, I still think Matt Smith looks weird with long hair, but, but we'll get past that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy's and he just kind of has a weird face in general. I me. also still I wonder: know. are we just gonna watch a bunch of relatives having sex? I hope this not. Whole I really like, hope I, not. <laughs> like, <laughs> is this just full Jamie Cersei for 10 yeah. episodes? <laughs> I feel like the regular Game of Thrones kind of normalized incest a little bit. And, you know, you, could, <laughs> you were kind of desensitized to it by the end. And I'm like, I'd, I'd rather get back to a point where it's like, oh, incest, we don't we don't like that. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's now now we have to, like, get back to it being uh, like we have to get to normalize it again because we've had that gap between Game of Thrones ending that we're like, no, that was weird as shit. Now we got to do it all over again. <laughs> right. And, like, the, I think the problem this show might face is that the first Game of Thrones was so, like, there'd be so many things that would just, like, shock you, you know? Like, a lot of the moments were about shock and, like, kind of surprising you. Now we're going to be expecting that kind of stuff. So you can either, yeah. like, ramp it up even more and just try to go for shock value, which I feel like will not work because, like, we're just kind of expecting it. Or you can just try to tell the best story without that kind of stuff. I don't know. But, like, either way, like, the the whole shock factor will, won't be there this time. Or I think they also have the us. benefit of people not being as attached because this isn't based off like a strict set of books. So it's like, mm -hmm. that's true. they know the end point because of how Game of Thrones starts, but it's like, they can kind of do, in a sense, whatever they want. I know that there's like lore that George R. R. Martin has written, mm -hmm. but it's like not as in depth, I would imagine, as like a, taking a book and adapting a book. You know what I mean? So right, right. I feel like people might, uh, like, it, uh, audiences might take it in a little easier than uh than game of thrones ended that's, obviously yeah that's a great point <laughs> i hope that there's magic in there aside from the dragons i hope there's some some like cool magic that was one of my favorite yeah, parts of the yeah. original yeah uh that comes out on august 21st so it's actually not far away hell so, yeah mm -hmm. pretty exciting uh final trailer of the week um we got our second teaser or actual trailer yeah for the obi-wan kenobi show on uh, may the 4th um it's, I'm happy because it doesn't show like the plot. Like it's still pretty mysterious. There's mm -hmm. a couple of new things in there. We see a quick glimpse of uh, Kumail Nanjiani's character, who I didn't even know was in this show. So that's kind of cool. Good for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. You get a bit of 
more Vader foreshadow, which we know that Hayden's coming back, but I'm glad they didn't just be like, here's Vader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought one of the interesting things they said, it's a, uh, I forget the words they used, but it says um, like told in six parts or a six part uh, saga or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be mm -hmm. six episodes, but the way they phrase them, like, I wonder if they're going to be longer than like, a typical like 40 minute show mm -hmm. i wonder if it's like Maybe. an hour and a half like a like a movie length per episode mm -hmm. or something that would be interesting yeah that'd be kind of cool It'd look give give a little more time yeah i mean i i've been jazzed for this ever since they announced it like what even back when it was originally going to be a movie like I, I i want this now just give it to me <laughs> yeah yeah and i'm a i'm a huge fan of six six episode seasons like yeah, just nice, nice and so contained. concise pacing mm -hmm. works better and i don't know but yeah, it looks like I, yeah. I don't. I don't know if he shoots somebody in the trailer, but I saw somewhere where like it looks like he's going to use blaster, so that'll probably have a little funny line yeah. in when he. Which does I that. guess makes sense if you're you're not trying to whip out a lightsaber if you're in hiding, you know. So right. it yeah, makes sense true. that he's got a blaster behind him. He also does some like cool hand hand combat, which is like okay, it'll be one. Mm -hmm. I forgot you can use your fist. <laughs> I don't know why you would, but okay. <laughs> I mean, it looks like he's definitely going to go off planet. So I wonder fun. how many times we're going to see him wielding his lightsaber. If at all. Yeah. I really hope it's more than once and not just verse Vader. Yeah, right. <laughs> like that that would be a little um a little sad. But do you do you think they're gonna have a, Var a Darth Vader fight? I guess they will. I think so, man. Or, or I'm getting my money back. I think yeah. there's gotta be there's gotta be a round two, and then round three was a new hope. I think so. Oh, true. Yeah. I think we gotta uh, it, you gotta see if you're bringing Vader back. I think you got to see him kick some ass and not just, I mean, we've seen him destroy like <laughs> shit people, like that, just mm -hmm. regular fodder soldiers. But like to see him, we haven't seen him in his prime go head to head with a Jedi. And I think this is, this is it. Yeah. That yeah. Would you, be cool. that, you're right. You can't bring him back and not let him do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't true. know how. I guess they're obviously they can't have the fight on Tatooine or else Vader's the dumbest person alive <laughs> if he doesn't go back <laughs> and check. <laughs> so. I don't know where that fight's going to go down, but yeah, we'll yeah. see. Can we get the episode three choreographer for this? Not Please. anybody from the sequels. I don't want anybody from the sequels touching this, all right? <laughs> this fight between Vader and Obi-Wan, it better be only the person from episode you know, three. You Kathleen Kennedy's a producer on this, and she touched the sequels, well, right? <laughs> just pick the right people for the choreographer. That's all I'll say. <laughs> it's no hacking. Yeah, I, I hope so, too. That would be, that would be amazing. Um, yeah. Looking forward to it. That comes out on May 27th. So mm -hmm. also right around the corner. Nice. Hell yeah. All right. Final quick news story. Uh, Fast X, this 10th Fast and Furious movie, uh, just lost its director uh, like last week. Um, we didn't talk about it because uh, we were like, details will come out. And they've come out. Uh, according to THR, apparently uh, Justin Lin, the director's decision to quit, was because uh, uh, a script issue. He thought he had a done script. And uh, apparently uh, Vin Diesel and Universal did not think that. And apparently the whole kind of debate ended in a shouting match with Justin Lin leaving and slamming a door. And then he quit. <laughs> wow. Mm. Uh, it's a, I, uh, I, it sucks because I actually genuinely have fun with this franchise minus the ninth one. The last one I thought was really not good. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, they're usually like fun popcorn flicks. And I feel that this movie is not going to be good now. <laughs> yeah. He probably just didn't understand the number one rule of Fast and Furious is it's only about Vin Diesel, even though he's the worst part. He's simultaneously all of Fast and Furious, but also the worst part of Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to cater to Vin Diesel's bald head. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're also like spending a shit ton of money keeping production going while he's gone and they're trying to find a new director, which they, they have already found. Um, it's going to be, what's his name? Uh, Louis Leterrier, who's done a bunch of random stuff, and uh, he did like the Edward Norton Incredible Hulk movie and some other stuff. Interesting. Um, which he'll it'll be fine. He's done like yeah, like some action movie type stuff. I'm sure he'll be fine. But uh, yeah, Vin Diesel. I don't know why. I don't know what you're doing. I do wonder what like the script was that he had a problem yeah. with. But like, <laughs> I'm sure Justin Lin's script was good considering he did the past like six <laughs> six movies. <laughs> It's like Vin Diesel, like the original script is like, you know, like we're going to go underwater. And Justin's like, no, we don't have to just keep upping the ante in stupid ways. And he's like, I do no, wonder if it's underwater. that. If Justin Lin was like, we should bring it back. And <laughs> Vin Diesel's like, no, I want to be a day. I want to be Iron Man this time. <laughs> <laughs> we're making it just a little, an actual superhero movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Which is why I think I didn't like that last one because it, it got too superhero even for me. <laughs> yeah, I got I got to catch up. I've seen the first one and a bit of bits and pieces of the second one, I think, and maybe some of Tokyo Drift. Oh Jesus! Oh no, you're way far behind. <laughs> I haven't seen. It. I feel like after Tokyo Drift, like around four, maybe five, they completely evolved into like a different. Yeah, yeah. You you missed five. the Fast and Furious Renaissance era. <laughs> yeah, I mean they've been to space now. They've had a submarine chasing them. I mean, there's just yeah. they, it's it's gotten absolutely ab- absolutely ridiculous. But that's Too why much. we like it. Between so. between the last Fast and Furious movie and Hobbs and Shaw, they have not been doing so well for me personally. <laughs> yeah, but that's the nice thing of the, the director. The expectations are so low because it's like it's Fast and Furious. Like even if it sucks, people still like it. So like you don't <laughs> I, you yeah, I mean, cannot yeah. fail. Like you can't fail. They'll also, make all their money back just in on, in China alone. Exactly, every time. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And also, the the Rock must feel so vindicated right now because he also hated Vin Diesel. So you know he's probably sitting there like, hmm, see, told you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, that is it, everyone. That is the news uh, for mm-hmm. this week. We did it again. We did it. Shall we now move on to our main topic of the week, guys? Oh yes. Let's begin. I'm excited for this one. But uh, first, we are trapped in another fortress this week. Uh, this fortress is uh, pretty magical. A, l- mm-hmm. uh, a little mad. A little bit. A little mad. A little scary. Uh, it's, it's, a little scary. Mm-hmm. Very um, scary. But uh, we'll see how it all turns out. Because uh, we're in the fortress of... Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange. In the, the, multiverse the, multi- of madness. the multiverse of madness? The it? three yeah, there universes you go. of you madness. <laughs> Two two whole universes of madness. Doctor Strange so and the uh, wait, wait, we'll talk about it. Hold on. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> listeners, we are covering the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, uh, which just came out. Uh, I think this is the Ooh. quickest like release to <laughs> podcast <laughs> since we've gotten so far. Um, so let's quickly, no spoilers, uh, overall feelings. Uh, clearly, we Devin, you go first. Clearly, we can see where Devin's we, leaning we are, we are quite divided, I will say. I, I, <laughs> okay. I, don't know, I don't know what is up Devin's butt right now, but... <laughs> All right, let me let me start let me start the expectations off. Set the expectations low for everybody, okay? For the Marvel bar, this was a garbage tier movie. For for the Marvel standard. Oof, wow. All Oof. right. For like a regular random superhero movie, it was okay. For the Marvel bar, it was bad. Let me ask you a question. Was this better or worse than the first Doctor Strange for you? Uh, I would say worse. <laughs> wow. wow, worse. Wow. Only, well, okay. only because only because of how, like, I mean, for one one big thing in particular, that's a big spoiler, but the other one fit more into, like, the established timeline of what they've been doing. This one, to me, okay. did not. Into the timeline? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. That, I, I can see, I can kind of see where you're going, but okay. Um, I I think I'm somewhere in between the two of you, and I'm, I, I liked it. I did, but, like, I, I definitely think it's not on the top tier of Marvel stuff. It's more, like, the B-ish tier for me. Slightly B, B-plus-ish. Um, cause I did have a lot of fun with it. Um, there are some elements that I, I have to address and like that it's like, uh, definitely like, um, a bit of actual like criticism and also like my own expectations, um, which I, I know that's like my, that's my own fault for having expectations. But I also think they did some stuff in the trailer that I think didn't help the movie as a whole, which we'll mm, talk about. Interesting. Yeah. But I like, I had fun with it for the most part. Um, but I do have my problems with it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I fucking loved this movie so much. <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's up there as one of my favorite recent uh, Marvel movies. Wow, I don't have I don't have very many bad things to say about it. <laughs> that's good because Devin's got them all. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm a I'm a huge fan of the director Sam Raimi. Uh, I've I've liked a lot of the things he did. He did the um, first three original Spider Man movie before it was like a Marvel made movie. He also does a bunch of like kind of funny horror stuff that I really like, like the Evil Dead series and Drag Me to Hell. And he's just got a really, he's always has like a really particular style. And I just have a really soft spot for directors or filmmakers that always throw their, their personality or their style or their, like their, their signature onto anything that they do. And you can totally tell that it fits like his body of work outside of like, in, yeah. well, inside of being a Marvel movie, a Disney movie, a big, huge blockbuster movie, you can still look at it and be like, if you didn't know that it was Sam Raimi, you'd be like, this is a cool movie, but something about it's like a little bit off. Like what, mm-hmm. so what, what is, I can't put my finger on it, but when you know, it's like, oh yeah, this is like totally like, uh, his kind of a movie. Like it's funny. It's 
pretty spooky. Like I, there was a lot mm-hmm. of jump scares in there. Um, but there, there's jokes about how fun, how scary it is. And it takes lots of like twists and turns through all the different like um, universe mm-hmm. trippy stuff. I do wish that it went a little further into like the, the madness of the universe. It kind of just like yes. talked about or like flirted with the idea of. It's more like the, the multiverse of like madness at times. Yeah, it's, like, it's, like, <laughs> it's like, here's how crazy the madness of all the universes could be. It could be terrible. It could be as bad as that <laughs> way over there. Like, don't look at it. Come back over here. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that, that, but that's for me, it was fine. Like, I, I, I didn't I didn't hate that. I wish it went a little further. Yeah. But for mm-hmm. the things that it did push, I feel like it nailed, you know, it, I think mm-hmm. it was a great movie and I had a lot of fun watching it. All the uh, surprising elements were like really fun, and I felt felt myself like applauding all a lot of the like um, different things that were happening. I was just like, mm-hmm. hell yeah, like that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it was the spookiest. I feel like they should have released this around Halloween or something because like mm, it was yeah, definitely yeah, the, yeah. the spookiest Marvel movie. Like I'd say Infinity War was still the scariest because you're just watching Thanos knock out all these Infinity Stones, but like <laughs> you know you're just like oh shit, like you're kind of on know. edge the whole time. I, I but, think like, there there is definitely some specific moments in this that are I think the scariest Marvel stuff so yeah, far. Definitely, I, but it's still like I I I would say like depending on your child's age, don't take them to see this. I might yeah. traumatize some kids yeah. in certain scenes. <laughs> I mean, it, it is PG-13, but... It, it, it's teetering, it's though. Teetering. It's teetering. It like, is teetering. It definitely yeah. is. And it's like, there's some things where if you haven't seen, like, Game of Thrones or, like, that new show, like, okay, Invincible, that animated show on Amazon, mm-hmm. like, that show has a shocking That's scene, not for which children. is, like, yeah. one of the most disturbing <laughs> things you've ever seen in the first episode. So if you hadn't seen that before... You, th- there's moments in this movie that would shock you. You'd be like, oh my God. Like, yeah. And then, but you know, so I was a little bit more like it didn't hit me quite as hard because I'd seen these other kind of like pretty fucked up things. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I, there's, there's definitely stuff that if you're like a big fan of the MCU as a kid, I don't think you'd want to see a few of these things happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, with that, should we jump into spoilers guys? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's 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 go right in there. Let's uh let's let's start off a little slow. Let's ease into that first big action sequence. So first off, I think uh my favorite strange is ponytail strange. I like his look. <laughs> uh, I like his shaved sides and ponytail. <laughs> yeah, defender yeah, strange, no, I think. No no cape either. He's just like he's just jumping around, nothing tying him yeah. back. Man, I thought he was gonna be such a bigger part of this movie, and then he dies like immediately. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. I definitely think this movie for the most part, was definitely not what I expected. No, um, yeah. In, in a lot of things. Uh, I guess I will say one aspect that I did like and I have to give them props for um, is that they kept Scarlet Witch as the villain the entire time. Yeah, I really I really thought they were going to teeter and like they were going to like have to join forces for the common good of some other bad force that we didn't necessarily know about, but they really did not do that. Yeah. So that's that's like my biggest complaint with this movie is that okay. they and it kind of broke the illusion for me. Like honestly, in a Marvel movie, you're usually following the story and like you're following along and you're you know you're with it the whole time. This movie, I was so like out of it, like I wasn't buying what they were selling me because of the character assassination of 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 Wanda. Well, what why why do you why do you call it a character assassination? Because like it, it, it is important that everybody would watch should watch uh WandaVision, WandaVision before yeah. watching this show. Agreed. Right? But that's why it's character assassinated. Because the at the end of WandaVision was about grief, right? About accepting her grief and like, you know, moving past like her parents dying, her brother dying, vision dying, having kids, not having kids. Like Wanda's been through so much and we finally got to humanize her for that right and like actually become a very sympathetic character yeah you're right and then what here's where they lose me. like i, d- I don't have an issue with her being the villain because that's where i thought they were going to set it up with at the end of wandavision but the issue is how quick she turned to it and how casual it happened and how it didn't really make sense like you weren't really it would have made more sense to me i think if she was just like mad at dr strange because she made a really good point when she at the beginning where she hit him with facts she's like you knew that vision was going to die and you made me kill him on purpose and i like i could change nothing when you made me kill him anyway because you gave him the time stone you gave thanos the time stone so you could take vision back 
like even after I blew his head off and then he just brings <laughs> there are him back a lot to of life. people that blame Dr. Strange and like there wasn't another way and he's like no motherfuckers I only saw one way and I had to do it. but like <laughs> listen man in Endgame he was sitting there de- like battling a fucking waterfall the whole time in the background like you tell me there wasn't a single other way where maybe you join the fight and help out like you couldn't have, you couldn't have put some yeah. junior sorcerers on that waterfall and maybe you go I don't know fight Thanos like anyway, yeah, no, absolutely. You're not like, oh, wrong. I got to do this wrong. waterfall because you know, uh, you know, but but anyway. So Wanda, I just feel like it was just too quick and too easy for her to just be like uncompromisingly bad. When, but I feel I feel like I I hear you in the content the contents of the movie. It it was pretty quick, but in reality, it was years in the making. Like we saw that whole story in in WandaVision, like you said, but by the end of the WandaVision and the end of the post-credits, we see her, we come to terms, she comes to terms with the things that she's had to do and and her fate and we humanize with her, but then she loses her kids and she's not able to let that go. She's She's like, this this is my line. Like, I am not losing my kids, which which is a a very real human human emotion. And she's like, I will go to the ends of the earth. I will not stop at anything. I'm getting my motherfucking kids. And back. I think my, for me, it's like I, I'm kind of with on um, both sides of the thing. I'm like super. I like I love the reveal, how fast it is that she's the villain. Mm-hmm. Like Dr. Strange goes to her for help. And it's like, no, it was me. <laughs> and then she's just bad guy the whole time. Like, yeah, it, it I love that. Funny. But I, yeah, I also kind of don't in the sense that kind of like Devin, that I wish there was a little more time. And because this is movie is short. This movie is like barely two hours long. Mm-hmm. And it's like the short. It's one of the shorter Marvel movies. And I think. It, and it, it's nice, and I wish more because it it, ha- it goes at a blistering pace, and it's just nonstop, which is good. But I do think uh, I wish there was more development to Wanda because she has she, she is a line early in the movie where she says like to Doctor Strange, "You you break the rules and you become a hero. Yes. And when I do it, I'm the villain. Yes. How is that fair?" And I wish that 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 sentiment right there, that sentence, just kind of echoed throughout the rest of the movie, and mm-hmm. like kind of, so that like you it teetered for Wanda being a villain a little more throughout the whole thing, just because I, yeah, I can say it's been years since the end or at least months since the end of Wanda vision. So the dark hold had that much time to take over her and that's what we're supposed to go on, which is why she's just evil now, but it's yeah. hard to do that when you don't see it. And so it's, it's, it's yeah. And they, I feel like they should have done a better job if the dark hold like corrupted her lot, like her mind, then they should have done a better job of explaining it that. And they kind of did, but they didn't really get they into it They do it, it very loosely, yeah. And like, she was just very, and like, I feel like it would have made more sense if like, maybe she saw another dimension where like her kids were being tortured by Harkness or something and she's got to go save them. But no, her whole plan was literally to just kill their mother and like take the place of one of them. And when she finally lives out that reality, she's like, oh, never mind, I don't really want to do this. But then like, I mean, yeah, like, at the end, like, you know, she's, like, uh, he tells her, he lectures her about using the dark hole and stuff at the beginning, and then he uses the dark hole at the end, and she's, like, you I mean, she calls him a hypocrite. hypocrite. Like, yeah, she yeah. does. Like, yeah. it's so true. Like, <laughs> so I just feel like where we left her in WandaVision, she was, like, she came to peace with it. Like, you know, she, came, and yes, she started reading the dark hole, but, like, I feel like it would have been, there, there were other ways that she could have been motivated to be, like, I want to leave this dimension, like, you know, this universe and go to another one without it being so uncompromising and like at least being a little bit more justified in her like motivations to do that. And like, not to the point where she's like killing all these sorcerers and killing, like she's killed so many people. See that I, I'm into, if you're making her the bad guy, make her the stone cold killer, bad guy, like go, go all in, you yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. I see where you're coming from. I just Devin, wish they'd but, done um... a better job either way, either make it more apparent that the dark hold corrupted her mind or make her motivations you know, more understandable or both. I hear what you're saying, but for me, I feel like her motivations were valid. Like she was being selfish and she wanted to have her kids and she wasn't willing to think about or to pause for a moment to consider any other plan B or like consequences. And for me, that's, that's human. That's real. That's justifiable. That's what makes like a a good villain on, on, on paper to me. Well, another, another weak part of her, like, like why she was so bad to me is like, you know, at the end she was like, like Doctor Strange is like, okay, or Wong was like talking to her and he's like, you know, why couldn't you just like use her power once and then just like get to one one universe and then like why do you have to kill America, right? And she's like, Oh, well, what if what if one of my kids gets sick and then they die and then I have yeah. to go to another one? It's like what like that? I mean, that's just weak. She was I mean I, lo- I mean, like to me, like that fits. And uh, if she's already committed murder, I it doesn't surprise me that she would hang on to this power 
so that her kids could never get sick. Like if they get sick and there's something that's not working and incurable on her mm-hmm. earth, she's got the multiverse powers. It'll be a, there'll be a cure for it on a different, in a different universe. So I, I, that to me, I get more. I wish there was more to that in the movie. Yeah. It kind of felt kind of hastily done to me, like her whole descent yeah. into, you know, being the true. And that's guy. what I'm saying. I think like if this movie was a little longer and like, apparently Sam Raimi's original time was at like two forty five before okay. the reshoots. And then when they reshot more, it actually cut time out to put the reshoots in. And oh, so I was like, I don't, wow. I, I do wonder what it was like before those reshoots. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think maybe a little more time with Wanda at the beginning would have done her a little more service, but I still love that they stuck with it to the end that she is the bad guy yeah. of this movie. Yeah. And, that, and that's what they wanted, right? They wanted, like, they wanted to fully have the power of the Scarlet Witch in the bad sense of like, you know, yeah. we've gotten it to be on our good side for this long, but now it's like, now it's pointed to at, against you. And like, that was, you know, and she definitely got OP. Like, yeah, she did. She, she's, okay, so she's like easily hands down the most powerful character in the she's cinematic the strongest universe. In the universe, yes. Gotta be. <laughs> well, in the cinematic universe is like plural, like she murked her buddy. Yeah. I guess uh, real quick, since we're talking about Wanda, uh, well, let's just talk about her kind of full story. By the end of it, she dies in quotes. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think she's dead. If she's dead, I would be incredibly sad because her, be that shocked. just means. That means her character arc is nothing but tragedy, yeah. which they could yeah. do. It would be incredibly dark of them to do that, but they could totally do it. I really don't. I really hope they don't pull some crap like a variant of her is the new Wanda, because that would still mean that this our OG Wanda's arc is just horrible. Yeah, that would be that would really <laughs> yeah. be shitty. I, I feel like she she's gonna take some time to herself and just hang out in the rubble. And uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. see her, we'll see her in a couple <laughs> more movies. That's why I feel like she can't be dead, right? Because there's like a flash of red as the mountain was collapsing. Right. So maybe she teleported mm-hmm. or something. I don't know. I didn't know she could do that, but maybe she can now. But I mean, like, she can do whatever. So way, who knows? <laughs> but the way that scene was shot where like the rocks are coming in, it just felt so like if it was really like her last appearance, I feel like they would have done that in kind of a slower way and maybe have a tear coming down her cheek and do it kind of slower. But they did yeah. it so like quickly, like the rocks just come down and she's gone. But I I really hope we do get her back because of what you say, Oscar, about like, you know, her whole character arc would be bad now. And like, look at some of the other characters in the MCU, like freaking Hawkeye, who <laughs> murdered people in cold blood, still got to go have Christmas with his family. And we were That's all what I'm saying. Like people are people have been talking about how like does Wanda doesn't deserve to get like a good ending after all this. And I'm like. We're old, totally okay with Loki, like basically nearly committing genocide, and now he's like has his own shit. Everyone's happy with him. It's like Wanda in this movie kills a bunch of recognizable people, <laughs> but she in this movie only kills like what, like ten people and a bunch of robots. Whereas Loki and his army killed probably thousands of innocent people, and we're still just like, eh, it's fine. We didn't see it happen. <laughs> he's, just, he's so charming. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, I, I I don't get the argument that it's okay for Loki to get a good ending and like kind of come back and be a good guy, whereas Wanda, like, no, because of the act she did, she has to stay evil and dead. So, yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I hope we see more of her, but I don't know. It's just, it would seem unfair because of all the other characters that have done bad things, and then they've, you know, redeemed themselves. Yeah. I do also think, like, for me, like, my my ex- own expectations of, like, I definitely thought we'd see Vision in this movie. Right. And I think right, Vision yeah. could have been a voice of reason, even if, like, at the end when the um she uses, uh, or um America uses her power and shows her her kids and her kids are terrified of Wanda. If Vision just comes down the steps as well in that scene Ooh. and it's that whole family's together and they all kind of talk to her and and that's what also helps her out. Like, just something, I definitely thought we'd see a Vision in here at some point, but yeah, no, no Vision. Yeah, Paul Bettany must have not been able to make it or something, right? Or they just wanted to keep the illusion that Wanda is dead because we know there is another Vision. We know Vision the White is out there in the normal mm-hmm. MCU universe. Right. Mm-hmm. And so he's got to get, like, he they got to get back together at some point, you know? One I don't day. know. I hope so. Yeah, we'll get back to Wanda if we have any thoughts. But um, let's talk about that first opening fight with the the big, not uh, Shuma Gorath monster because they can't use that name because they don't have the rights to it. So uh, it's just a different squid monster. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I remember in the trailer, we were convinced that that was going to be the same squid monster from uh, What If, but it, it didn't, it doesn't seem like mm-hmm. it is. It's just like a, no, it's just some kind of, that's like the demon. theme of this movie is that we all thought it would be characters from What If, and it's right. like, no, <laughs> yes, it really is. Yeah, there were so many things, but um, I thought that fight was cool. Yeah, it was one of my favorite sequences. Um, 
I also just really feel bad for all the people that live in New York City in this universe. Like, it's just, just, all it's just a normal Earth. fucking Tuesday for them to see a giant squid Dude, capturing honestly. something. Like, they're all videotaping it. I think somebody at the wedding, I think the groom was like, wow. This is awesome, or something. I'm like, dude, right. people are dying, about to die. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's like because, like, Doctor Strange is like a celebrity. Like, he's just going to weddings, pouring people drinks with his magic, <laughs> giving people wine and shit. And it's just like, and so yeah, mm-hmm. a big squid in the city. It's like, oh man, I got to take a different bus now. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, what a what a cool thing to happen on our wedding day. Also, right. he looks his with his like side, like his goatee with like the side beard. Man, you looks he looks so goofy. He, he looks great when he has like his own robes on. Goofy as hell in street person clothes. Like, oh. <laughs> he's just like sitting there in the church, like his hair jumped back and like this goofy ass facial hair. It's like, bro, you're a clown. Man. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty weird. That, yeah, that everyone just knows it's him and he's just chilling. I like yeah. how he he takes the time to down his drink before he jumps off the balcony right. into that fight. Though mm-hmm. he's like, I'll get to this. <laughs> I think he he knew it was he he likes his flair. Doctor Strange likes his you know. His oh yeah. He's like, I know exactly what I'm doing. These people are gonna be. Mind I mean, when I do this right now, he's pretty narcissistic, so I, right. I, he likes the attention. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely, and he did get some closure there with Rachel before this fight starts. Of just like you know, eh, it was never going to work out. So yeah, that is the only scene in the whole movie with the regular MCU Christine. Oh wait, um, I called her Rachel. <laughs> Rachel McAdams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christine, the character. Yeah, because she gets married, and uh, he has to cope with the fact that she moved on with her life. Uh, mm-hmm. Which I oh, that was the thing I meant to bring up when we were talking about Wanda. I didn't didn't think about this until I heard someone else um, say it. Was that uh, I like and I I kind of like it. I wish there was a little more to it. Is there? They have kind of like parallel storylines, but in opposite direction. In the sense that Wanda is completely she can't cope with losing her family, whereas Doctor Strange's whole story in this movie is being able to let go of Christine and not he doesn't not he can't use the dark hold or go to a different multiverse to be with her type of thing. Mm-hmm. He doesn't try to break the rules to just to be with her. Whereas Wanda is the exact opposite. And she'll break every fucking rule to be with her family in a mm. different universe. So I thought that was an interesting parallel between the two of them. And uh, because we have seen in What If a version of Doctor Strange that mm-hmm. did what Wanda did. And he couldn't cope with it. And he broke every rule. And then he was right. fucked. <laughs> so I just thought it was interesting between the two of them. Yeah, that is, that is pretty interesting similarity. Yeah, definitely. They make for a good duo, the two of them. Yeah. Um, Squid Fight was cool. I liked his magic. I liked uh, his weird... He had demon hands and a demon mouth. Yeah, that was cool as shit. I read I read somewhere before going into the movie that uh, was explaining a little bit of the lore behind his powers and all the other sorcerers. Source, sorcerer, sorcerer, sorcerers, sorcerers, sorcerers. Yeah, uh, it was it was basically <laughs> saying that they're 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 not like they're not necessarily using like magic like we would see in like Harry Potter or whatever. They're they're conjuring like spirits or demons from other universes. Right. So when I feel like this is the first time you could really like tell that when they when he was like summoning like a giant dog mouth to like bite yeah. a car in half and mm-hmm. then summoning these giant pink hands to grab something and and throw the spear and stuff. I felt like that was so like such a creative way to to showcase his abilities. And I, I wish that they kind of kept that creativity um going, but it, it kind of fell yeah. into like more of just like non generic ge- yeah, just kind of generic powers. Until until the the like climax when we got into yeah. like a, a really cool musical fight that was that was amazing. Yes, yeah. which yeah, uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. But I do think yeah, the magic was definitely better than than the first Doctor Strange movie because that yeah. was my biggest complaint with that first movie is that it's all just orange flare and that's pretty much it. But here yeah. he actually did some spells that did something else than other than just a big orange circle. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. well, that's what I was gonna say was. I mean, yes, those things were creative, but I, I like just to piggyback off Alex. I wish they had done more creative stuff. Like, I think that like the my favorite Doctor Strange fight in the entire MCU is when he fights Thanos on Titan. Yeah, because he's being so creative. Like, he's you know using the mirror dimension. He's turning stuff into like butterflies, and it's not just like let me throw energy at you. Let you throw something at me. Let me throw it back at you. And it, it turned into that like later when he fights Sinister Strange. It was like. You know, we're just gonna fight with like different colored musical notes. Like, okay. no, that was yeah. bullshit. No, 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 no. I, that was fucking amazing, Devin. Excuse me, I'm gonna stop you it right was there. Just orange versus that purple. Was They're just throwing dope. it back and forth. Like, I was no, like, man. come on, you gotta, li- you gotta listen. <laughs> I at first had to like adjust to it because I was like, this is a little. It's very Sam Raimi like camp at the same time because yes, I think very, you're also supposed to kind of like laugh and have fun with it. It's not very serious. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had to kind of adjust to that. Also, I was like, no, I can't complain about this because I've been complaining about how not creative every other thing he's done <laughs> is been. And then they did this. And I'm like, no, this is but creative as fuck. Completely fucking weird. Like, the, like, yeah. like if, even if you listen to it, like the, the he's throwing like Sinister Strange is throwing like super like tension building, like diminished yeah. chords. He's like, uh, and then and then and then our universe of strange is like resolving it to like a nice major mm-hmm. chord. And that's like such a like a a beautiful like score. At the same and time. Yeah, they're playing the score of the movie at that point. Yeah, and it, they're playing the score, and it's making sense even without seeing what's happening. You can hear the story and what they're physically doing. So it's just it's just so so deep and like meta to me. I really was like, yeah. mm-hmm, I like how away. he how it starts by he rips the notes off of the sheet music <laughs> that surrounds him. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just wish it had been like more like redirection and like using the actual like powers of the sorcerer instead of just like you know, energy this way, energy this way, energy this way. Like, yeah. I I mean, I think that's like my overall, like one of my other criticisms about the movie is that it's like we were saying, it's not very mad of a, that's probably the maddest it gets in this whole movie is that music battle, you know? Mm -hmm. And like everything else is just kind of, this is a different New York city street, but it's just greener now, you know, like the multiverse stuff. And I think the trailers did it a disservice in that, most of the stuff from those trailers is basically the whole movie. There weren't that many more surprises um, mm-hmm. beyond like maybe one or two in this mm. movie, at least for me. Like, because like when I heard Multiverse of Madness and I saw that they showed Professor X in the trailer, I was like, damn, what the hell else are they hiding? Like, how many cameos or how mm-hmm. much multiverse craziness are we going to get? And it really wasn't that much more beyond that. And I think that's probably one of the things that I was kind of disappointed by by the end of it. Because mm-hmm. um, like the, the other main multiverse they go to, like I said, it's just Earth, but it's covered in more grass. Right. You know? <laughs> they use they use wind turbines on every apartment building in the you know, yeah. It's like the idealized version of New York City. I completely forgot uh, before watching this that Professor X was ninety nine percent sure everyone was sure that he was going to be in the film. I totally forgot that. So when he came on screen, I was oh. like, "Holy mm-hmm. shit!" Yeah. <laughs> and then and then seeing um, Mister Mister Fantastic, like I knew a little bit about Illuminati and who they were whatever but um it was super cool to see professor x and really fucking cool to see john krasinski as uh mr mr fantastic mm-hmm. like that just that just felt so good to me and like yeah. the og like yellow yeah the, that big, uh, yeah, big yellow, yellow bus <laughs> yeah like he, he might have even been hovering but i don't know that's like the that was a crazy i mean also i love that when he first comes in they're playing the og uh x-men animated theme song as he rolls in that was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just talk about the Illuminati now that we're here. Um, so I think my that this was where one of my biggest surprises, because I'll be honest, I was so mad. About 12 hours before I saw the movie, I got the John Krasinski thing spoiled for me. Oh, I was just scrolling man. through YouTube and then a giant screenshot someone had posted on a video was just him. I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> what a random I mean, I guess oh. it's not random. That's 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 pretty awful though. Yeah, I was so mad. But I mean, it, it I, it was fine eventually because it just made me like more curious as to what version of Mr. Fantastic is this? Is this our version? Is this mm-hmm. a different multiverse? So I, it was still fine. But so he wasn't as big of a reel. For me, the biggest thing was fucking they got the same actor to play Black Bolt from the terrible, terrible Inhumans <laughs> show that nobody watched <laughs> in this movie. They put him in this movie and I couldn't fucking believe it. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no idea who that motherfucker was. Yeah. Me neither. I didn't he, watch that he, show. he seems like a good actor. Yeah, like he's in other stuff. I mean, hey, he didn't have to say much, right? So <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, and they gave him the the OG dumbass costume with a big tuning fork on his yeah. forehead. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was that was, it was amazing. Funny. Oh my god, that was funny. We got that. We got Captain uh, Captain Carter, not from the What mm-hmm. If, I would imagine. Um, so different, different variant. I hope her. not. I really hope not. She <laughs> yeah, why, I, why do you yeah. hope? Why do you hope it's not the same one from What If? <laughs> I'm assuming because she's dead. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, sure. Because she okay, got chopped yeah. in half by the the shield. <laughs> Very fair. God. Well, well, uh, I heard What If season two is coming, so we'll see if if mm-hmm. she's around or not. You know, maybe she'll pull her legs back to her torso. Yeah, I don't but know. I, I, <laughs> I'd imagine that all these characters we're seeing, we're just seeing for the first time. Because if we saw. Yeah her in this like why did we not see anybody else that was of the like guardians of the universe or whatever that team that is also the question is like 
you think that they would show up in this movie or like the watcher considering the multiverse mm-hmm. is at stake why wouldn't you get the guardians of the multiverse to yeah. show up at some point <laughs> right and that's what i meant by like i i think my own expectations kind of failed me in the sense that i thought there would be a little more cameo yeah. type and like more more like doppelganger stuff of like more doppelgangers meeting each other because the only right. time a, a doppelganger meets another doppel a person is the strange music battle. Mm-hmm. Pretty uh, and every yeah. other time it's just one person on screen. And I definitely thought and Wanda at the end when her other self convinces her not mm-hmm. to blow everyone up. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I definitely thought we'd get like a Wanda v Wanda fight at some point or some shit. But yeah, mm-hmm. we got a Wanda v Wanda uh, emotional fight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a fight of words. Um, so yeah, we got uh, Captain Carter, and then we got. Um, Maria Rambo, uh, mm-hmm. Captain Marvel in this universe with a dope ass suit, and then yeah, like Mr. Fantastic, John Krasinski, which was the biggest like fan casting. I, I I'm sure people loved it who were fans and wanted him for so long. <laughs> yeah, to be I, don't, I don't I don't remember. Um, I was reading through the internet, but I don't remember that being like a big uh thing. I must have missed it. Where people people have been like um rooting for him to be cast as this person for a while. Yeah, they've been wanting him and his real-life wife, Emily Blunt, to play oh, Sue Storm. Oh, that, that'd There's be There's a lot sick. of fan art of the two of them. That'd be cool. For for yeah. which which film, though? Just, just uh, like, in the past couple of years or, like, way back when they had... Uh... Oh, no, like, in the like during the MCU. Okay, you know, got it. Interesting. They've been wanting them as, like, uh, the Fantastic Four, those two, at least. Don't forget about good, but also not good, Mordo. <laughs> and that, yeah, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Oh, Baron Ordo is in this as a cool guy, and then he has a fight. He he's, he's barely in the movie. <laughs> he literally goes through the same character arc that he went he through does. in the first movie of like being it's... cool at first and then immediately being sketchy. It is weird that there is no normal MCU Mordo in this movie at all. Like, yeah, right. They're just like, n- nah, fuck it. He's sitting on the bench still. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like they've escalated Doctor Strange's like a- enemies now to where like Mordo just isn't like he just isn't in the same league anymore. You know, he's not like, strong yeah, enough. Yeah, maybe. Like I don't know what they're gonna do with him. Maybe something, but I don't know. Like he- he's just too weak. I don't know. But... Um, uh, as far as like the Illuminati goes, obviously, uh, also Professor X. I do like that they didn't like do a weird CGI head swap for Captain Carter because I was worried because mm-hmm. like in what if she's like eight feet tall, you know. But she looked good in this movie. She looked good with uh, with the shield and everything. Mm-hmm. I liked her little jetpack later on in it. I, I thought she had, uh, she looked good. And I was like, thank God. It would have been weird seeing her floating head on another <laughs> yeah. body or some shit. <laughs> those, uh, all, all those fight scenes were pretty pretty fucking crazy, too. Like I was on the edge of my seat just like oh my hoping God. somebody would get in a punch or two. That Wanda was, was just like ripping, literally Man. ripping brutal. them to shreds. Yeah, it starts off. The with the worst one with Black Bolt where she Ugh. matrixes his mouth. And as soon as that happened, I was like, don't speak. And then this is where like I was like, how did you guys get a PG-13 rating? He yeah. lets out the smallest whisper and then just blows the Whoa. back of his head out, dude. Ugh. Oh, my God. That was brutal. Now, I can yeah. still hear that sound effect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she literally she turns... John Krasinski, did we I don't do we even see him use his elastic power at all? Nope. He, he uses just, it once he when he shows up. And then, <laughs> she put that man through the like a teleportation like device. He doesn't do anything, does he? Oh, oh, when he shows up for the fight. Yeah. yeah. I feel like yeah, he, he like stretches in her, from the ceiling or some shit. I feel like, she, this, like she utilizes his powers most by turning him into spaghetti. That was uh, oh and his God. head like pops Boop. at the end of it. Oh. God. And then she she hits him with that line. She's like, "Oh, do your do your kids still have their mother? Good. There'll be somebody left for them." Like oh, she was God. not bluffing. I thought that she was, was I ice thought she was cold. Bluffing. I actually liked that. I actually liked how cold she was at times. So I'm like, she's the villain. She was cold as ice in that yeah. whole scene. And bye bye, uh, John Krasinski. That was yeah. Also, they introduced him as the smartest man on on Earth when he first shows up. Man, he's dumb as shit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what were you doing? Why would you do what were, he reaches for her right before she like turns him into spaghetti? I'm like, what were you gonna do when you grabbed her? Like, what were you going to do? They really, yeah. really underestimate for how smart they were. Like our universe uh Dr. Strange was like, I don't know, guys, like this Wanda lady is really <laughs> something else. They could have been like, hmm, let's 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 consider this for a second. They're just like, nah, nah, there's other there's other problems like you, motherfucker. Like he's not doing. <laughs> anything right now though yeah that was the best yeah. it's like they're like you're the biggest threat to us steven it's like wanda's literally outside blasting <laughs> through all of the people and She's robots in this right entire now. building they're like all no no, no we're not talking bots. about her we can handle her we're talking about you right are you sure you can handle because she's like you're still i mean i guess talking to me. <laughs> i guess that goes to like the illuminati is kind of like 
they've always been like the big eggheads of Marvel, but they always somehow like fuck things up because like, they think they're so smart, but they oh, always okay. are idiots. So I guess maybe that was how they were going with it. <laughs> okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Because yeah, I mean, like all of them disappointed. Like even somehow Captain Carter's the one that lasts like second to long to, to least, and she right. just gets fucking cut in half by her cut, own shield. Oh. Like. That, that was, was horrible. Horrible I did like that see. she got the line, uh, I could do this all day though. Yeah. I was like, nice. <laughs> yeah, great. That, was, that cool. was great. And then she lasted about four seconds after. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> and then like I felt uh, to me the fight between because like I feel like you know, ma- like a lot of MCU stuff is about like seeing matchups and like looking forward to like, ooh, what, what's gonna happen if like Hulk fights Thor, you know, like stuff like that. Like, ooh, how their power level is gonna match up. I felt like the fight between um Rambo's Captain Marvel and her was yeah, kind of anticlimactic. Even. Like they just kind of like spun around each other and shot energy at each other. And then she just died under a pile of rocks, which I feel like Captain Marvel yeah. definitely would be tougher. I feel than. like they, Wanda kind of had to do that because they were more or less evenly matched compared to everybody else. And right. Wanda saw an op- opportunity to kind of like play a little dirty and threw the the statue on top of her. So she's like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not like, I don't, I don't need my honor. Like, I'm just going to kill you. I mean, and like we saw like her hand fall, but like she could be alive in the universe. Yeah. No, 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 she's, no. Dead. she's fucking dead. But she's They're probably dead. <laughs> that. That universe is so fucked now. Yeah. <laughs> they got <Yeah>. no heroes. <laughs> but it was kind of cool to see like the 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 Ultron bots be in their intended use. You know. Yeah, I do wonder like who created those. You know, yeah. like yeah. was it Mister Fantastic or are there other heroes? They're they're just not in the Illuminati. You know, right. maybe yeah. there is an Avengers in the universe. I don't know. But yeah, that whole sequence where she just wipes the floor with them is amazing. Ugh. And she's just like covered in blood and Ugh. just like very, very Sam Raimi in the aesthetic of Wanda when she, at that point. <laughs> yeah, 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 covered in the oil slash blood. And she's yeah. kind of like got a, like a stiff leg when they were like running through the tunnel. And she's yeah. like, oh, very, God. very zombie. That scene was so scary. That was oh. that was a very like scary scene. I can like imagine them writing it and they're like, OK, but like. We're doing jump scares, yes, but how do we write a <laughs> horror scene? Like, let's think about this. That probably has the biggest jump scare for me personally yes. is that when they shut the last door and they're just waiting there, yeah. which for one, I'm like, why aren't you still running? What are you doing? <laughs> but then they're just waiting there and then she just appears out of nowhere, not Ugh. even through the door. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it was also classic like horror movie of like, she's like shuffling, like she should be way slower than them, right? But then every shot, like it changes. She's like closer she's like, and closer. Like she was like twenty feet away from him, and then she's like five, and it's like, oh god, yeah. like she's catching up. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Oh, but we sh- we should also quickly mention the um before we get fully off the Illuminati, the uh the Professor X very anticlimactic psychic battle with man. Her, like, how many times are they uh, gonna kill this poor old man? <laughs> <laughs> and that was scary so as hell. Much. That oh, was yeah. really scary. I was like, just, just like, grab her, grab her, pull her out, yank her and, out, like, oh. the girl, the like the the version of Wanda that's like being under control. She's like, nah, I'm good. I'm just gonna hide in the rubble. Like, <laughs> like I'd rather just be in here. And that red cloud comes up and she just grabs his his face. Like Ooh, that was, uh, just every oh. time they see you see Wanda uh when she's in like that full makeup of like the, oh. the red eyes and the blacked out face it's just like just mm-hmm. they only do it like a couple of times but man is it creepy she looks like a demon yeah it's yeah. terrifying yeah Oof. but like i just like to imagine like wanda you just snapped the neck of a man in a wheelchair <laughs> <laughs> I'm like jesus christ wanda oh my god She'll give two shits. like to so the people in the outside world not in that dream world that's all they saw was the man in a wheelchair get his neck snapped by this woman uh, oh yeah. god it's terrible yeah that was but bad. yeah i mean I, I was sad because, like, I guess spoilers spoilers for Logan movie, if you haven't seen a long time ago. Uh, Patrick Stewart always said that that would be his last time as the character. And so I was always oh, really? slightly worried when this trailer came out that, man, I, I loved how what they did with him in that last Logan movie. And I, I don't want this movie to undo that. It kind of undid it if this is his last time being Professor <laughs> X ever. It's cool that he was in the MCU for... 30 seconds but it's also like damn they really just brought him in and snapped just killed his him neck immediately. And yeah. I, don't, I don't i don't think he's coming back i mean they might have professor yeah. x the character but i don't think it'll be patrick stewart anymore yeah i don't think so either so but yeah. it's, like, it's just like i feel oh. like i feel like his uh other um other films are like still still a special place because this is like a, a different universe i mean What's to say that the the Sony Marvel movies or was, were they Fox? I don't remember all the all, uh, all yeah, the, Fox, um, yeah. the X Men movies that we saw were were in what is it six one six like our yeah. quote unquote yeah. our True. universe like maybe it True. was a different universe yeah yeah it was cool just hearing him say the name Wanda Maximoff 
that was pretty cool. I, I was like, oh, that's a nice little comic book moment. I no, I was waiting for them to mention just the word mutant, but they never nope. did. And I was yeah. like, ah, oh, damn. And we also thought that like the multiverse of madness would like breach them over into our reality somehow, but they didn't do that. So But um I did like one thing about the Illuminati that they acknowledged that they're strange didn't die the hero that they said. Uh, he was he ended up using the dark hold to defeat their mm -hmm. version of Thanos and they just had Black Bolt atomize him. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that is brutal. Oh man. Yeah. It was cool to see Black Bolt use his power once in that movie. <laughs> yeah, true. I, I read that um for for that scene, um, they got him to record him saying I'm sorry, like a bazillion different times and just like layered it for the oh, for the effect. Oh, that's cool. So I, I it's just it just it sounds like a cool thing to like think about like uh he had one line but he said it a thousand times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like aside from like oh we didn't get the take right let's let, let's try that take again. Okay, we yeah. got it. Now let's do it a thousand more times. <laughs> and do it in like all the different emotional ranges. If he was yeah. paid per per line, I hope he got paid handsomely <laughs> for each. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not, uh, but you're only getting paid for one line. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was cool. I. I mean, I. Congrats to that actor for for making it into the MCU like, uh, prime. I guess. And too bad he's probably dead not now. gonna see him. <laughs> too. Yeah. Too bad he's his brains a, a puddle on the ground. Yeah, that must really <laughs> suck. Like, I wonder if like uh we've seen variants and how they can look like the same person or a completely different person. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder like a person like John mm -hmm. Krasinski who. Who very well could be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and be amazing at it, but just as easily for the creators, they could just be like, "No, we're just going to get somebody different because mm -hmm. what yeah. X Y Z." Let's like, talk about that real quick because I that that was one thing I wanted to talk about at the end. But I'm in the mindset that he's not coming back. I thought I think this is a one and done. This was for the fans type of thing, mm -hmm. and they might just start fresh. But maybe not. Maybe he will come back because I like in this movie. I think also the reason like. Uh, you didn't get like a Tom Cruise Iron Man or anyone else because it's very much established in this movie that the multiverse, the people look the same. Mm -hmm. Like they haven't crossed that boundary yet in this movie, at least, which is why I think they didn't want to confuse people by doing that, really. Like Captain Marvel is a different character. It wasn't still Carol Danvers. Right. Thing. But but right. in Loki, we saw like an alligator and like a fucking right. a bear or something, right. all kinds of things. But that that was that was like a lot more universes at one time that we were seeing. Yeah. 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 Like, like I would have loved to have seen them bring back. I know this is what I thought if they were going to do fan Mr. Fantastic because he's in the Illuminati, bring back the dude from the OG movies. Like I thought that would have been Ooh. fun to do. Like, mm. like, like Spider-Man bring back old people. Like I, if they were going to do that, I was like, bring back Chris Evans as human torch in this movie. This would have been the perfect opportunity to do that. <laughs> that oh, well, Cause he's not word. back as captain America. <laughs> That's He'd cool. only be there for human torch and then kill him off. That would have been fucking amazing. <laughs> That's that hilarious. So I've never really thought about that. Oh my God. The man, like, and Cause Strange would have been like, who that, what, wait, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> like, ah, uh, Dude, if Jessica that Alba just like walked on screen or like or like the thing, like that would have been, yeah, that would have been amazing. <laughs> been so funny. yeah, I I still think that yeah, he might not come back, but who knows? Maybe the fans got it right. I think it'd be cool. I I feel like he was a uh, I, I'm a big fan of his, but I I uh, I could see him doing like a great job as that character. He was so like reassuring and like seems mm -hmm. like such a great leader. I saw yeah. some rumors, or maybe they're they're not rumors. I think it's just like more fans talking. Um, like, what if we we all know that the director recently quit or was oh, fired? Yeah. So, what if John Krasinski stars and directs this Fantastic Four movie? Like, that would be that would make a lot of sense. That would that would be pretty cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that seems to be his his mo. Because he, he did. Uh, if if people don't know, he did the uh, first and second A Quiet Place movie, which were really great um, mm -hmm. horror thriller movies, which was surprising to see him in something like uh so serious but he's a he's a pretty phenomenal actor and director i think mm -hmm. yeah i do also real quick i like how mr fantastic saves uh doctor strange's cloak after right before black bolt kills him though like you see him holding the cloak and he's like uh you're you have to die but we're gonna save your cloaks <laughs> thanks <laughs> this is useful to us <laughs> there's technology in it and they fix it they fix it too yeah they got like a little patch it's gonna be a quilt by the end of the. no no i'm talking about the their old their their version of uh, dr strange in the scene where black bolt uses his voice and kills him yeah mr fantastic is holding a blue cloak oh, that i'm wow. assuming was that dr strange's so that means they had a scene right before he got on his knees to die they're like can you give us the cloak first <laughs> 
<laughs> the not cloak to, is not innocent. to kick you while you're down, Listen. but uh, we could maybe use that. The cloak later. is sentient, so it's got its own things. The cloak yeah, is, I didn't the do it. The cloak probably left. Is like I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> I don't know this man. Yeah. Oh, man. I've never met this man in my life. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's go back real quick. To, speaking of Wanda destroying shit, she there's a scene at the Doctor Strange's big uh, camartage, the big temple, mm -hmm. where she just wrecks shit. She just kills. Oh, she does a lot of people. And yeah, uh, I was. It was. A, it was a, both terrifying and amazing to watch because it's like holy fuck, they are doubling down, and she is the villain. Mm -hmm. There's a moment where she just incinerates a dude. Yeah, who was like. He looks like he was crawling Wanda, away. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that, Wanda. He wasn't doing anything. It was funny to me how the no sorcerers prisoners. were fighting with like magic bows and arrows, and then also they had a, they had this cannon, and they were like loading it by hand. Right? So dumb. Like, so like, dumb. Aren't you guys magical? Like, wouldn't you just like you know load it magically or like something I, like that? But they're like, I literally wrote that down. I was like, I hate when there's like mystical, magical, like ad super advanced things. And they have the dumbest, slowest weapons in the world. Yeah. It's like, why don't you have like a mini gun to shoot at her? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, that was goofy as hell. It was like, it's like, quick, load it up. It's gonna take thirty seconds. Like, just <laughs> so like the Civil dumb. War. Like, gotta load it's up this so cannon. Oh man. Yeah. And then I don't know. I just feel like it was that that whole fight was a little underwhelming because like you feel like they should have been able to take her or at least keep her at bay. But I don't know. It really showed that like. Doctor Strange and all of those sorcerers fucking are their weakish piss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either that or she's super strong, which I guess, yes, she's super strong considering she takes out the entire Illuminati later, but it is just like, Doctor Strange, what are these people really doing? How, how strong are these people? Because they suck. <laughs> and then at the end, it's like, nothing really happened and they're all just there training again. It's like, yay, like, you know. Oh, I know, which is why I was like, okay, so she didn't kill that many people. Yeah. Because this whole place is just well, full of them again. I thought she killed everybody and then, yeah, like, I thought she killed everybody and then she like animates those five like hostages and she's like, I'll kill them if you don't take me to the mountain. And then I was yeah. like, oh, they weren't dead already? Like, I thought they were dead. Which I'm like, Wong, why would you tell her? Why would you risk the entire multiverse for four people? <laughs> Why would you tell her where to go, Wong? <laughs> I do like the idea that, like, if that was Doctor Strange, he would have let them die. He wouldn't have said shit. <laughs> he would have been like, I'm not telling you, Wanda. You can kill those four people and that Minotaur. I'm not <laughs> telling you shit. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they had to... They had to have Wan have a purpose in the movie, right? And, like, they had to give Wanda something to do while Doctor Strange was out. Out and about, so yeah. I guess that's why. I mean, Wong kicks ass at the beginning of this movie against the big squid. Yeah, Wong was cool. Like he's doing a bunch of flips, and he's got that like little like knife dagger at the end of a mystical string, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he had some good action sequences, and then he go up to the top of that mountain. And he's just like doing the logic stuff to Wanda. It's like, well, wait, what if you know, like, why would you do it this way? Why? Would you? She's just like, eh, I don't <laughs> care. I'm doing it my way. Yeah. Also, those like Titan things went down very easily. I mean, it was Doctor Strange. They just got way too close to the cliff, and then he just knocked him off the cliff, which felt very anticlimactic. Yeah, I was like, all right, bye. That was probably, like, the, the, the second biggest jump scare for me was when Wanda turns on all the torches in there, and then she gets to the last one, and that thing just pops up on the screen. That that one got me to jump a little bit. Oh, one of those statues? Yeah, one of those, like, yeah, statue creatures shows up and, like, jump scares everyone when Wanda's first, when they first get there, and she's turning on all the torches in, in the whole room. Oh, and she turns to get to the last one, and it just pops up, and that's where uh, they first bow to her afterwards. I must have missed that jump scare because I don't remember that. So that first sequence, like, I love the 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 sequence when uh, she's creeping through the the reflections. Mm -hmm. They trap her in this like really like cool like dagger mirror area, and then she just finds a way. She's like, "Nah, this is this ain't gonna work. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm still getting through this." Oh my god! Yeah, like he trapped her in the mirror dimension, and then she just figured out how to get out of it. Ugh. And then she does like that creepy walk out of the Ugh. out of like the big like symbol or whatever. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, oh yeah. That was, scary. That, was, oh. that was very creepy. Or like and that one, like I guess they had like the, the most OG sorcerers, right? Like protecting America in the bottom, like that old like Asian guy who looked like he was gonna be really badass. And then she just fucking pulls him into a puddle and he's just dead. Like <laughs> It just dies, um, like, all these people just disappearing in puddles. It's like, oh, Jesus, like... It's true, like, we don't know where those people go. 
<laughs> no, we're good. That's for dang sure. <laughs> yeah, the whole Kamatosh fight was kind of sad because it's like, damn, I, I thought the sorcerers were kind of good. But when you think about it, all they really do effectively is shields. Like they did shields in the battle, the end game battle. They did a shield here it's until it's they because their magic sucks. <laughs> That's basically the best thing they do is shields. They they put a shield on the world itself. There's like three, what the three sanctums make a shield around the world. They're kind of just you know shields is what they do. It's their specialty. Yeah. I did have a question about Spider-Man with Doctor Strange. He brings up Spider-Man and how they had a multiverse issue with Spider-Man recently. What does he remember from that? Because the whole point of that starting was Peter Parker. So, like, this, did Spider-Man just come up to Doctor Strange and was like, hey, I need you to make people forget I'm Sp Spider-Man? <laughs> like, I, what does he remember? Yeah, because, wait, he, did, he wouldn't even remember either, right? No, he doesn't know Peter Parker as Spider-Man. So what the hell does he remember that that was a multiverse issue? Damn. Like, how did that problem begin if he doesn't know Peter Parker? Anyway? Dude, it doesn't make any sense. I think and they'll that's, never address that's it. That's got to be some kind of oversight by somebody that wrote the movie because, like, they would have checked at some, like, they should have caught that. Wait, what, what, what are we talking about? How in, how in the movie, Doctor Strange, like, when America first shows up, uh, he says, yeah, we, we've had experience with the multiverse. Most recently, Spider-Man was in a multiverse incident. But that incident starts okay, so, with Peter Parker. So what the hell does Doctor Strange remember? <laughs> so I think I think that I've come to terms with thinking about this a, quite a while. Mm -hmm. I think that they didn't forget about Spider Man. They just don't know who he is. He's just like a masked crusader. Right. But how how did that multiverse incident begin for Doctor Strange then? Because the whole reason is because Peter Parker wants people to forget he's Spider Man. So what did Spider Man just go to him with a mask saying, "Hey"? I want you to make the world forget I'm me. <laughs> like, like I don't know what he remembers. That's true. Yeah. I, guess, I guess I guess it's just like, oh yeah, I don't I don't know why what happened. Something but happened. <laughs> he know he knows it was a, a universal catastrophe. Yeah, I think that's I guess. like a throwaway line. I'm sure I'm sure he knows that it's a catastrophe, and he probably knows that he can't remember something, and it's because it's a yeah. paradox that he can't figure I it out. I think that's like a throwaway line. They didn't really. Th think through because yeah yeah absolutely i think that like as we we all knew this like as soon as they got into multiverse stuff that the continuity was going to get pretty muddled <laughs> yeah right yeah that is for interesting. sure we haven't talked about america yet yeah there's probably a reason for that no. <laughs> <laughs> oh you didn't like her no i did not think she was that good acting wise i think she'll get better she's a kid let's i like i'm aware that she's like 14 years old she's a child and most child actors are so so but i i'm pretty i feel like i'm pretty fair like i like it i'm not really over critical on kids but there were times in this where i just like man that is just she's just not very good and i get it maybe if this is your first giant thing and you're just surrounded all by a bunch of green screens on wires that's hard for your first big thing but when you also have two other child actors in this who i think are better and younger it's like eh, i don't know mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't have a problem with her I thought she, I thought she was cool. I mostly liked her character more than anything, so I'm excited to see where that um, character uh, grows into. Also, uh, notably, the first like LGBTQ character in the MCU. Is well, her right? mom. She's got two moms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like her her introduction marks the first um, in that we've seen, right? Because we haven't seen any other LGBTQ characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't. I don't think so. At least I don't know. Well, the Eternals. Eternals. The he had like a husband. Oh yeah, Fastos. Fastos yeah. had a husband. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. But yeah, she had like a like a pride flag. Maybe and maybe maybe it's just for her her parents. Maybe it's yeah. not representing her. But yeah. I just thought it was. a She cool also little has touch. um the the phrase "amor es amor," which is "love is love" on on her jacket, which I thought was pretty oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, her 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 jacket was uh aside from the the writing that she had and the the flag um pin. I thought her jacket was a little bit weird. It felt very like early 2000s <laughs> late 90s uh like our universe fashion, not like a different new like those flashbacks she had. Like that universe looked pretty like uh pretty primal. Mm -hmm. Like we're What's up with this yeah. jacket? Like they looked like very yeah. otherworldly, and then it's like maybe she picked it up in a different multiverse, in a different yeah. universe. Yeah, I guess maybe so. She's yeah, yeah, because <laughs> she does say that she's traveled. So right, I thought I just thought it, it was goofy that her portal was literally like a star shape portal. Like it was so goofy to me. But then the really funny thing was that, like during her origin story, like that a bee scared her, and that's like the first time she opened a portal. It's like. <laughs> So you're telling yeah. me she never cried as a child and was never scared, like, as a baby? That was like, the first time she was ever afraid for her life. This is the first time life. she was ever scared of something? 
Well, and like she probably saw the season two of Bridgerton where the the main character's dad dies from a bee sting. So like, you know, you don't want to mess with that shit. All right, oh, yeah. She's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I mean, she's she's mostly a plot device in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought, yeah, I thought she was fine. Other like her, like she'll get better. And I'm excited to see more of her in the universe. Um, I don't know why she stayed with Doctor Strange to train to be them. Those sorcerers all suck at their job. <laughs> why would you? I wouldn't want to train there at all. <laughs> yeah, the only good ones are the main characters. But but they did introduce some like new um, main characters, like people that have like names, and were also in the end credits, which I thought was pretty cool. Like there's the the goat goat man. I don't know his name. Oh, and then the right. other woman or person who like sacrificed themselves towards the end of the movie. I guess yeah. they're just oh, dead yeah. she, to to blow up the dark yeah, they, Well, the goat man's alive. Yeah, the goat the man, other goat woman man who sacrificed is, her is, is dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's cool that they like made it to I guess there are notable characters in the comics. I don't know, but they made it to like the end credits, which is pretty neat. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, they never explained yeah. the goat man at all. Like the big Minotaur bull guy. It's like, why is there just a random green bull? At Kamatage. They I'm don't assuming he's that. like a, a fan comic book favorite. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't know. But real quick, speaking of America, there is a cool sequence where they go through about 17 different oh, man. universes. That was cool the shit. only multiverse of madness. It was cool if we had stayed in one of the cooler yeah, ones. Yeah, it would have been great. <laughs> but they just to linger end up a, even, even if they were just like in the paint one, splashing around for like a minute. Yeah. That would have been really fucking cool. Yeah. Get me the one with the dinosaurs. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't care. Oh, how, how about, I, there's a theory that I saw that uh, they, they pass through one that's like a like a lava world. There's a theory that it's, mm-hmm. um, is it Mustafar from Star Wars where they, where they oh, have like the episode yeah. three battle? And then in, um, in What If, they have a similar sequence where they're tra- traveling through a bunch of different like universes. And again, mm-hmm. There's that the same looking Musafar world. So what if Musafar is a part of? I mean, um, that, would make, cool that would make universes. sense with Disney. Yeah, right. I mean, I think there was one that was like comic book looking. So like, what if they yeah. briefly passed uh-huh. through like Miles Morales universe? That'd that would be cool. been really cool. To acknowledge, there's a lot of cool ones. There's one that's like looks like a, a black and white noir type of one. Yeah, there's the animated the noir one. is a popular Spider-Man comic, so. Who's, who's to yeah. say that a particular comic book hero isn't in, in all those? There is also one where uh, you see what most people are look can tell is uh, like there's a bunch of faces in one. And a lot of people recognize that as the character, the living tribunal, which is basically just the overseer of the of the multiverse more than even the, the watcher. I would, I would oh, imagine wow. um, as in there is only one of the living tribunal in the entire multiverse. So uh, maybe we'll see that come back. Who the hell That would be amazing. That, yeah, that was one of the coolest, like, mysterious uh, things about the whole movie, just the, all their yeah. faces, like, with their cloak and their glowing eyes. I was like, these people seem cool as shit. That, that whole scene left me wanting more. Like, I wanted more of that. Like, yep, a little bit more time too. in each one. Like, maybe there's a scene where, like, Wanda's chasing them through, the por- like, the portals or something. I don't know, but, like, I just wish that we had gotten more of the actual multiverse because like, you know, like we said yeah. earlier, like it was really only two or three universes that we really spent a lot of time in. And like there was like the spooky, um, you know, sinister strange one where like everybody's dead and he's the only one left. That was kind of cool. And then there was like the green New York City, like hopefully that what we can get to in like 2040, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like multiverse, what, 838 or whatever. And then R is 616. Yeah. But like, I just wish that there was more actually time spent in multiple, you know, universes. And that was, then that was like the only little bit we got of that, of like a true multiverse of madness. Like, you know, that's fair. Um, I, I have, I have two uh, questions for you guys. First, uh, what do you think happened exactly to Sinister Strange's universe? Cause he, he briefly says that, oh yeah, like it all went to shit, but he didn't really talk about like what, fucking happened i'm assuming because he uh, you find out he's been like basically corrupted by the dark hold i'm assuming that's what happened yeah because he says that he basically went through a bunch of different multiverses trying to find her and killed a bunch of different stranges right and, which is why how that fight starts and so maybe because we we learn earlier in that movie that traveling through the multiverse is dangerous because uh it can cause what they call incursions which are basically two mul- two universes collide and is either one dies or they both die or whatever and their doctor strange which is why he um they had to kill him was he caused an incursion and 
killed an entire universe. And so it seems like that is similar to what Sinister Strange did to his world, maybe, because it looks like, because they even say it, actually, yeah, it looks like two universes collided here. So yeah, I see yeah. maybe that's the same world that their Doctor that's Strange fucked. That's what I kind of think. I think it's the same, the same one. And uh, Sinister Strange failed to protect his own universe and himself. And so um, it started imploding and he's the only person left. And it's, and it's mm-hmm. cool that uh, late, I, I, in, in the trailer, in the original trailer, you can see like when he's outside of that, uh, the Sinister Strange's house, there's all these skulls on the ground. But when he's walking around and the, the cars are kind of floating up and you can see like uh, light beams around and stuff, there's no, mm-hmm. there's no like dead bodies. All the dead bodies are outside of Doctor Strange's house. So it's like everybody yeah. kind of maybe everybody went to Strange for help, and he was just like, I, <laughs> he just put, I can't he help put you. a dome over his house and said, "Sorry, yeah. sorry, yeah, I can't help no, you. Got to protect my there's house. There's nothing else I can do for you guys. I'm sorry." Mm-hmm. Oh man, That's super yeah. grim. Yeah, yeah. it's very grim, very dark. Also, he gets fucking impaled at the end of that fight. <laughs> I was like, that, oh. yeah, that was brutal. <laughs> that was <laughs> holy shit. That was, that yeah, was a that was violent brutal. fucking movie. It really was. <laughs> to think that this has the same rating as uh, like Captain America is b- b- and Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, very. Yeah, yeah. Second, second question. Uh, at the very, very end, we see the post credits. Um, we see this girl who, I, what's her name? Uh, Sia? Clea. Clea? Clea, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I found out she's Dormammu's niece somehow, even though she looks like a normal person. Like, who would have thought <laughs> yeah. Charlize Theron and a monster were related? But there you go. Yeah, I... Yeah. So what do you think the incursion is that he, he started? Uh, probably going to a world where all the heroes died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, probably that. One. <laughs> I don't know, maybe something like that. I don't know. Like, yeah, we still don't really know how how it all works. If it affects the the universe that you enter or not. Mm. But also, at that point, we know he is also corrupted by the dark hole. Now he's got the third eye, and he's just mm-hmm. totally cool with it. Right? He's like, yeah, cool. Why not? <laughs> I can see more things now. Yeah, like so the Sinister Strange had the dark, the, the third eye in the fight, and then he uses the dark hole later, and then. I guess he's just kind of okay with it. Maybe it makes him more powerful or something. Maybe it's part of the eye I, of Ayamato. I guess so. He just got an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's leveled up. <laughs> Dexterity times three. I, I, I really hope that that does not like become a Doctor Strange thing of just like he has a third eye all the time. Like I'd, I'd much <laughs> rather not have that than to have well, it. Well, I, I, I saw um, back to the internet, I saw that in the comics he does have a third eye a lot of the time, but it is the, um, the eye of... Uh, it's a part of his necklace that's in the the movie. Oh, the yeah. the eye of Agamotto. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in the comics, it's represented as a third eye on his forehead. But that only comes out like sometimes. I think when he's like going Super Saiyan three, he's uh he's got a <laughs> he turns the cap backwards and throws out Pidgeotto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just funny how he's just like, cool, I'm in. Yeah, go ahead, Clea. Yeah, like, like I guess speaking of that, like cool, Charlene's there in his in his universe. Um, it's really convenient because uh, in the comics, Clea, it, they eventually get married. She's like a love interest to Doctor Strange. So it's just really convenient that he said his farewells to Christine, <laughs> his, his, his one true love. And then, oh, hey, what's up? Okay, yeah, let's go on an adventure. <laughs> oh, you? Yeah, uh, sure. I'll go, I'll go on an adventure. Well, yeah, yeah, why not? I'm single. I guess, <laughs> I guess that's where they're going is that uh, he's going into the Dark Dimension because she, I'm pretty sure, is the Sorcerer Supreme of the Dark Dimension mm-hmm. as Whoa. well as being Dormammu's niece. Right. So maybe that's where they're going. I don't know. It looked like the Dark Dimension from the first movie. It has like that. That's yeah. the similar aesthetic. So yeah. Um, but I guess since we're like nearly there, the reason why Doctor Strange has a third eye, uh, he is basically becomes a necromancer and and takes control of a dead body, Very true. which was pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, that Sam Raimi somehow got a zombie into yeah, this movie. Yeah, the, the <laughs> moment it, uh, when he says, um, "Oh, who who says it has to be alive or something like that?" And mm-hmm. then and you and you see the hand burst through the the cement. <laughs> <laughs> fucking perfect yeah that's one of my complaints with the movie is like the, I, f- I felt like the like the makeup or whatever on his face looked so bad like it, oh yeah i, I it think that's horrible. totally sam raimi's style though <laughs> it, it's it's weird but it's and it's totally camp 
but I I hundred percent think he made it look that goofy on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they could have made it look better, but yeah, it was like part of part of the humor. Like it was, it also didn't look like CG at all. Like aside from those like broken appendages, like his face looked yeah. very tangible. It which, did, yeah, which is a, really, and I think that's cool. like one of my things with it is that yeah, because we like we talked about Sam Raimi has a very distinct style, and I think if that's not your thing, and at times it wasn't my thing, and I had to kind of adjust as well on the fly then you might not like this movie because it's definitely a style. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Which is which is cool depending on how how you look at it. How if you wanted something different, it's cool if you are just used to the normal Marvel flair and that's all you kind of want from these movies and may, right. you might not like it as much. It's all right though. I think that's definitely the boat I was in, but I'm glad that I'm learning more about Sam Raimi's, you know, like his style now from you from YouTube, but like yeah, at the at the time I watched it, I was like for a Marvel movie, this is just like feels like low budget bullshit. Like, <laughs> like the only thing know. that looked or felt low budget to me that's like stuck out to me was like this looks like shit. Was the, the actual third eye? I felt like every time the third eye popped up, yeah, yeah. it just it like kind of bad. It just looks so like um, unpolished uh, of for CG. Like all, I feel like all the CG mm-hmm. in there looked really phenomenal, especially on, on watching it in theaters. Like everything looked really good, except for that eye, it just was not mm-hmm. up to bar. It just like one one moment of campiness that now I realize was just Sam Raimi campiness. I guess was like when Christine like uses that like magic cannon thing to like blast two of the demons, and then she's like, "Go back to hell." It's like such like a campy fucking. Oh yeah, <laughs> like just. <laughs> standard basic ass line i was like this is this is the mcu come on man like we don't do stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> i was i was trying to figure out what that thing is but it, it, i think it uh i forget what it's called uh but it literally does send whatever because it was in the first movie whatever whatever gets caught in there goes goes to hell literally so she wasn't like she wasn't lying right <laughs> yeah which I guess I we barely talked about her, but I think she Rachel McAdams is great in this movie. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of yeah. sad that it seems like this is the last we'll see of her yeah. character, unless we get like a multiverse. It seems like this is the goodbye, especially if they're introducing Clea. She's great in this movie, and I'm glad that if this is the, her goodbye, that she was in it for a majority, and she kind of like tags along and, mm-hmm. and helps out and stuff. She's also like the uh, like knows exactly what is going on with all the universes. She's like in yeah. charge of names. Yeah, she's like all. the cool. multiverse expert. That's pretty freaking cool. It's just funny how Doctor Strange gets rejected in the same exact way, like in <laughs> multiple <laughs> universes. She's like, no, you're just kind of too arrogant, and like, you know, you're kind of. A you dick. think he'd be like, maybe I should change how my character <laughs> a little bit. Maybe I should reanalyze my life. <laughs> it's like, nah, fuck it. <laughs> yep. One of the funny moments. My last little bit of notes is. Uh, Wanda, when, when America like hones in her power at the end and she starts punching Wanda, there's a moment where America's like, oh, I can do this. And she looks at Wanda, she goes, uh-huh. And Wanda's like, mm-mm. And before she can even barely finish that sentence, she gets whacked right in the face again. <laughs> like immediately just gets punched right in the face again. Oh, so I funny. Must, I must have uh, not, not caught that. That sounds hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, and then Wanda destroys every version of the Darkhold in every single universe. And uh, that's how she, quote unquote, goes out. Yeah. Oh, which which Hopefully also uh, I feel like is a fun like Easter egg to Sam Raimi. Like I feel I, f- I always felt like the Darkhold when they first introduced it was like the Book of the Damned in the Evil Dead series, mm. which is also like a lot of other text and probably thousands of books or movies or shows or whatever. Right. But uh, I'm glad that they got Sam Raimi to um, flesh out the, the Darkhold because it feels for me, it felt very similar to um, uh, a film that he was early, early on attached to. So that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Uh, my last couple of notes: uh, the mountain that they go to, uh, Mount Wandagore, uh, more like Mount Wandagore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Got him. All right, uh, and then uh, we didn't talk about Bruce Campbell. He has a oh, he has yeah. a cameo in this <laughs> movie. Man. He just <laughs> punches himself for three weeks. <laughs> Which is also a callback to Evil Dead because he's like, uh, I think in the second one, he's, before he cuts his arm off and puts a chainsaw on it, he's, he's like cursed. So he's like punching himself and his other, he can't, right. he can't, he's like holding him, his arm down with his other hand. And the only way to stop it is to cut the whole hand off. So he does that. Mm-hmm. And then he gets a chainsaw arm. He's also the post credits where he's still punching himself, which... If you punch yourself in the face for three weeks straight, I'm sorry, you're going to die. Yeah, that was kind of, <laughs> he hasn't, like, kind of vindictive. How do you, he hasn't eaten. He hasn't eaten. He's probably got 
piss and shit all over himself. Yeah. <laughs> I was very vindictive by Doctor Strange. It's like, oh, it should wear off. In it back. really was. All he like really that was, do was five minutes, and he's like, and he just casually is like, oh, it'll wear off in three weeks. It's like three weeks. What a so day! Do you do sleep. that to everyone that like does like the slightest thing to make you mad? Like, yeah. goddamn, dude. No wonder nobody yeah, that's, likes that's you. Why he's single. And he just laughs about it like it's nothing. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, like, oh, uh, it's terrible. That's a good thing he mm. made it though. He 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 survived thankfully. Yeah, uh, but those are most of my notes. Uh, no Mephisto, sadly for for people that were looking for that. Yeah. Sorry. I also thought it was interesting because there's also a Marvel villain called Nightmare that I thought they might introduce in this, uh, considering they're talking about dream walking and lots of mm. Wanda's having nightmares and yada yada. I thought that would be their central villain, but no, they stuck with Wanda, which is both amazing and also sad as shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there were certain things that people were expecting this movie would do. I really thought, like, I thought it would bridge over, bring over the mutants, kind of get that started, but I guess they're going to push that down the road and start it somewhere on their own. And like I, th I really thought in the trailers that Wanda when she's chasing him in the um the tunnel, I, I really thought mm -hmm. that like th they in the trailer they had like a shot of like her and it looked like the zombie Wanda from What If. I yeah. thought they were gonna do that. They didn't do that. But they, but they but they kind of alluded to it. I feel like they alluded to all these yeah, things. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah, like I'm kind of in the same boat on that aspect with Devin. Is that yeah? I think my own expectations kind of fucked with it a bit and I, I kind of when you're calling movie multiverse of madness and it's not as mad as it should be it's like ah eh, I wish this was the time to do the the, the not so crazy shit but uh, I don't know yeah also that book of Ashanti will never know what it would have done yo that is it's so sad to dust. that is so sad burnt <laughs> burnt to dust is there only one <laughs> is there only one book of Ashanti it seems like there's one in the whole universe, yeah, so uh, it, they might be fucked forever. That dimension, like between dimensions or whatever that they that the book was in, had all these like roads that were leading to it that were all shev severed and like broken, and everything was floating around. Apparently, uh, all that happened because of the events uh, in Loki and mm -hmm. and, ah. and Spider Man when when they killed Cain the Conqueror, like the the one who remains. That's kind of what started all these events that are happening in the beginning of multiverse of madness hmm. yeah mm -hmm. which i guess real quick if we're talking like i want to ask you guys what you guys think this is all leading to because i have a theory that this all might be leading to a big marvel story line called secret wars oh, which right. is basically mm -hmm. the overall thing was a uh, two two world worlds are colliding and there's only two worlds left and it's called battle world or something like that and it's basically a bunch of heroes fighting type of thing and Doctor Doom is like the king of the whole, the god of the whole universe. And uh, they might be leading to something like that. Basically Fortnite. Other than, yeah, basically. Other than that, the MCU still seems kind of scattered. Yeah. For the most part. There's no central like theme or vision tying it together right now. It's just, and like, I kind of felt like it from the post credit scene too, right? Like they used to build towards something and like each one was kind of a hint and it would set you up for the next movie or the next like phase of where Thanos is going to be or whatever. Right. Like introducing the next the next Infinity Stone or something. Now it's just like they just kind of each are are in their own movie. So like Shang-Chi's was like based out of Shang-Chi, right? Like there, it's no, there's no crossovers currently with them. Yeah. And so they're, I don't know, but yeah, I feel like they just don't really know what they're going to do next. But the, the theme is definitely chaos. I'm hoping that uh, when we finally see Fantastic Four, that it'll finally be the first movie of like whatever phase we're in to be like, here is where we're going. Because we we yeah, know that maybe. we know from Loki that he who remains or Kane the Conqueror is the offspring of uh Mr. Fantastic. So it would make sense to flush out that character or that storyline a little bit more in the post credits mm -hmm. or something of Fantastic Four. It would have it would have been great to see some of that in this movie, but unfortunately, I feel like we're just gonna have to wait. Yeah. We'll see. Um the next movie's Thor, and that's probably not going to touch any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was, I was, you know, I was really looking forward to this movie because I thought it was going to do some really cool stuff. And I will say that I think it was nice to have it be, and Doctor Strange should have the title for like the darkest MCU movie. So I think that definitely is true now that, you know, one of the Doctor Strange movies was the darkest. I just wanted them to do some more creative stuff with it, especially after movies like uh, Miles Morales, like Into the Spider Verse and some of these other creative stuff that we've seen i wish they had kind of just gone dive deeper into the creativity of what they could yeah have it is going to be interesting which multiverse movie is the best between this spider-man and spider-man miles morales mm -hmm. too you know it's we got a lot of multiverse going on so uh we'll see mm -hmm. 
But uh, yeah, it's, if that's all your notes, those are all of my notes. Um, overall, not too bad. I mean, w- wish there was more. There's probably a better version of this movie out there somewhere, but we got this one and it's not bad. I enjoyed it. I yeah. loved it. I give it a, I don't know what I would give it number wise, but I give it two thumbs up for sure. All my thumbs up. I thought it was a great movie. I had a great time watching it. I do, I do see where you guys are coming from, mostly with wanting it to be even crazier, but I feel like it was a really yeah. fun, well done, scary, hilarious, mm-hmm. action packed superhero movie. Yeah. Just bring back yeah. Wanda, man. I want justice, justice for Wanda. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn right. Let her get her kids, please. <laughs> Just give her yeah. kids. One day. <laughs> All right. Uh, that was fun. Shall we move on to our next segment of the show? Let's do it. Oh, yeah. Which uh, we're doing it again, ladies and gentlemen. We're interjecting another quick segment, which we <laughs> like to call Devin's One Minute Hell No <laughs> on Halo, where Devin has 60... 60- <laughs> Alex wasn't here last week, so he doesn't know about this segment. But uh, Devin has 60 seconds to complain about uh, Halo, um, the show, the series, the show Halo, which, uh, as you can tell by the title, he does not like. But he's not allowed to go beyond 60 seconds. If uh, he does, I will cut him off personally. <laughs> and uh, also, I'll cut him off in the recording. So either way, he's getting cut off, no matter what he's saying. <laughs> okay. Well, so, Devin, are you ready, sir? Oh, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. All right. So, the number one complaint that i had with the show so far was that like okay they you, you have to earn a helmet reveal right the mandalorian you earned the helmet reveal okay oh, no. they did the helmet reveal very late they did it for two seconds they put it back on perfect way to do it keep the mandalorian the mandalorian keep the helmet on halo show they take his helmet off first of all every chance they get they took it off Ooh. in the first episode you Ooh. didn't earn that shit at all and then he he keeps it off basically the entire show and then in like the episode two or three I, got, I saw something which I never wanted to see nor needed to see. Halo's but the butt. Master Chief gets like naked in the locker room. Oh! And you see Master Chief <laughs> butt cheek. Alex, you were not wrong. Oh, and he's like trying kidding. to take this like implant thing out of his back, man. I never wanted to see that shit. I didn't need to see that shit. Nobody wanted to see that shit. What's going you guys on didn't just do a helmet reveal. You did a whole ass body reveal. All right? We don't need that. Nobody wanted that. Okay, no one wanted to see Master Chief butt crack. All right, I'm tired of this shit. It's so stupid. All right, you're done. Stop speaking. <laughs> so, so Devin's final review on Halo: way too many cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I haven't seen any of this show, but uh, it, I, damn, just damn. I'm not going to. <laughs> That's wild. Uh. All right, listeners, maybe uh, we'll continue this segment next week up until uh, our our full discussion on the show whenever it ends. I don't know when. (laughs) Thank you, Devin, once again for (laughs) indulging us. (laughs) I'm mad. Now I'm mad. With that, should we go on to our actual final segment of the week, which we like to call Free For All, title pending. Uh, This is a segment, ladies and gentlemen, where you can kind of do whatever you want. You can rant. uh, You can talk about your day, talk about life. You can recommend something. Uh, you can do whatever you want. It's a uh, free for all. Um, I can go first because I watched uh, two movies recently because I got Paramount Plus to watch and catch up on that Halo show that Devin was just talking about. Um, I watched uh, both the new Scream movie that came out recently, and I watched um, Jackass Forever. <laughs> Ooh, <wow>. So <laughs> two very different very movies. Different. <laughs> So I'll start with Scream real quick. Alex, we watched this actually. Yeah, together. that was a good time. Yeah, um, I had fun with it. It's it's. I mean, Scream's always been very meta, very kind of camp corn at times. Um, so overall, I didn't have a too bad a time watching this. I had some fun with it. Um, it's uh better than Scream Three, I will say, but uh, that was a pretty low bar to clear. Um, so yeah, it's not bad. Um, it's got uh some some there's some heart in it at times, which I appreciated, but um. Uh, I liked his aspects of the story as well of, on who the killer was and and some fun commentary on uh on today's I don't know fandom I guess yeah I totally we'll see. but um and then Jackass Forever I just kind of to watch just because I was I don't know I was always curious and wanted to watch I had not, I don't think I've ever actually watched the past three like front first front to back basically mm-hmm. I always ever caught glimpses of it this one was kind of funny you're like I'm not gonna lie it was pretty funny um it's just kind of fun to watch a good group of friends get together and do dumb shit that respond that like, like you can tell that they all are like really care about each other. 
Um, mm-hmm. So it was fun. It's it's real quick. It's only like an hour and a half. Also, I didn't realize this. Uh, side note that they're bringing that show back. Also, they are fully oh, bringing really? Jackass man, back to Paramount man. Plus. <laughs> so wow. I guess they're not done. I guess people watched that movie enough, and that they they're like. Fuck it. Let's make it up. Let's come They're back. Like, man, yeah, I guess we could probably hit each other in the balls a couple more times. Let's <laughs> let's do it again. I still got one testicle left. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, I don't I don't know how those goes goes. If they have kids, I don't know how. They like, they should all be like infertile at this point. <laughs> yeah, I was I was never a big jackass fan, but I do you guys remember that show Wild Boys? Or was it maybe Wild Ones? Yeah, uh, no, that was like it was like a spin-off on about. MTV. It was with just two of the characters. I forget who. And they, yeah. they went into the, they like, the like travel. They went, yeah, they traveled. They went into the wilderness in different countries and found like really rare, dangerous and venomous uh, animals, and would just get bit. Uh, and see, <laughs> just to see what would happen, <laughs> <What> the <laughs> they, fuck? they would usually get bit on their testicles. But... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but I, I always like I always learned something, so I was like, okay, this is like a, this is educational, I you know. Learned. Yeah. You know, fun fact, Steve-O, when he did his tryout for Jackass, he had like, it was like a tryout video, right? Like that's how they were like taking submissions to like join the Jackass crew. And he swallowed a live goldfish. And then the whole thing was that he was going to throw it back up, but he couldn't like throw up or whatever. So, but he eventually like, I don't know, the whole video is like him trying to throw up and he eventually throws up the goldfish and it lived. Oh my God. I thought he did that in one of the episodes or... One of the Ooh. movies. Oh, does he? I feel, I feel like I can remember seeing that, unfortunately. Yeah, but they were like, <laughs> well, obviously we got to get this guy in. So, you know, that was back oh, when he was funny. on a lot of drugs. So, <laughs> he's a little cleaner but nowadays. Yeah. So, so, some fun times <laughs> for those two. Yeah, well, that sounds fun. What about you, Alex? What you got going on? I am happy to report that I am almost done watching The Legend of Korra, Avatar, not the blue people. Ooh. I think I got like three, maybe four more episodes of the very last season. And it's shaping out mm-hmm. to be a great fucking series. I, yeah. We, we, yeah, man. I know we're all big fans of the Avatar. Um, I remember watching the uh, original Avatar series when I was in college, uh, kind of on like mm-hmm. on replay. I like bought the series and watched everything um, on Netflix, mm-hmm. I think. I think I bought it on iTunes and then eventually finished everything on Netflix when they got it. And, um, but yeah, I remember having a lot of time, a lot of good time, a lot of good time. A lo- Ooh. <laughs> this past my bedtime. I had a great time watching Avatar with The Last Airbender with Aang. And then when, uh, when mm-hmm. I think it was our sophomore year, maybe when Korra came out and something about that season, maybe because I didn't quite have enough time between um, the series, I wasn't really a big fan of Korra when it first came out. I think I got like halfway through the first season. And I was like, this just isn't for me. Like, this, this doesn't feel right. The stakes are not the same. Like, they're just playing sports. I don't, like, what's the point? But, um, Ooh, but I love that years later, so cool. I finally picked it up again. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll get past the first season and see how things go. And, you know, by the, by the halfway point, when they finally do introduce the villain of the first season, it gets, it, it, it gets a whole lot more interesting. And I feel like every season since then has been really incredible. I feel like. Yeah. I feel like it's a really great show and she goes through like so much shit. She goes, she goes through, through a lot shit. of fucking shit in a short period of time. So mm-hmm. it's really been cool to see. I'm excited to see yeah. the whole thing fin- finish and see where they, they go at the very yeah. end. Yeah, man. Yeah, I wish I wish with Core that they'd given them like I think Nickelodeon screwed up because they they would only give them like one season contracts or something for the creators. So they couldn't make like a four season vision. Right. Mm-hmm. So they had to just, each season had to be self-contained. So I wonder how Cora would have been different if they had had like, you know, like if it had been like the last airbender where the whole thing was one big story, right. but yeah. I did. I love season one and like they, and me too. To, to be fair, they did a fantastic job knowing that, that they were limited by, you know, going season to season. But I mean, you know, last Airbender's still the goat, but like you know, Korra's Korra's great. Yeah, too. I think it, I think it kind of helps the pacing of Korra. Aside from, I mean, I don't know what it is about the first season. It just takes so long for it to f- like catch its footing on like the whole world mm-hmm. complex. I feel like you know, Avatar is right. a worldly show, and the world is at stake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, sometimes more than just our world. But for the first half of the season, it's just like the stakes are just like a little bit of money and like 
your, you know, yeah. your, your own like livelihood, which is important too, but it's like, I don't know. It just didn't, wasn't, wasn't really hitting the same until they reveal like this person who's trying to get rid of all the benders and like conquer the world on yeah. his own. Which is like a very scary thing in that world. It's like, Ooh. but yeah, all the pacing kind of moves relatively quickly um, because they're not having to build things for like a, introducing things that aren't going to finish until like seasons later, everything has to finish within that season. So things kind of move and escalate pretty quickly. Yeah. You have to let us know what you think of the ending. Cause uh, I think that show is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and uh, it's got a great, it's got a pretty, pretty great ending. Yeah. Thanks. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Maybe we need to do like an episode when, when I'm finally done with it. Yeah. And the last season is yeah. very topical now too. Of like, you know, yeah. Fascism. It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, well, I got a quick one for y'all. I started the show with with uh, my girlfriend called... She, it's based on a book she read called, uh, I think, Under the Banner of Heaven. And it's basically like a docu-series on like more the Mormon church, like the later day saints. Oh! And the sh- the is that show, the one with um, Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah. So Andrew Garfield, he was in yeah. um, Hacksaw Ridge and he was in this mo- this this show on Hulu and he just plays a really good pious man for some reason. I don't know, but either way he plays a Mormon. It's like (laughs) discovering the murder of this, um, of this, this mother and her child. And you find like, we, we, you know, she knows my girlfriend knows cause she read the book, but it's like by these like fundamentalist, uh, Mormon group that like, you know, murdered her. And like, it just basically, you're just learning more and more about how wild that religion is and like how it's not, like you might think, like you know, oh Mormons, you know, like kind of like you know, crazy Christians, right? But it's like, it's so much more wild than right. I th- than I f- at first thought. So, I don't know. But the the way they structured the show is pretty good because the book was just kind of a documentary and kind of gives you the background and like, you know, just kind of some of the crazy stuff that's happened in the past and stuff. But the show is framing it through this police investigation, and you're learning more about you know the fundamentalists and the uh, even even the regular branch is pretty crazy, but the the fundamentalist branch is even wilder than that. So, so I'm I'm invested in it. it's kind of interesting, but uh, not a happy show. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. <laughs> Sounds interesting. No, it's cool. Yeah, it's good though. Yeah, I mean, good. Andrew Garfield's great. Um, I, I I as soon as you said the name, I I started to wrangle my brain because I I kept I kept hearing that name. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. nice. How many episodes is it? I don't know how many episodes it is yet, but we've only watched the first one, so. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. But I'm excited to see the second one. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Well, that is our show, everyone. Um, if you want to reach us, you can email us at thefortressof at gmail.com. Fortress spelled F-O-U-R. Feel free to email us any recommendations or feedback or anything about the show. If we missed something, uh, if you want to t- uh, tell Devin his rant sucked, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything of the sort. <laughs> maybe maybe you guys liked watching Master Chief's butt. Yeah. Hey, who Some, knows? somebody might. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram, also at the Fortress Sub and the Fortress Sub YouTube channel. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your grandma, tell your cat. Um, tell everyone in the multiverse. Tell to, all, to, to all the us. all the variants, yep. all the incursions, everyone. all the uh, different versions mm-hmm. of yourself. Let them all know. Yes, <laughs> and be extra nice to uh, Elizabeth Olsen if you see her on the street. She's been through a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please don't do. Yeah, she's not a monster in real life. <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. If you want to follow me, you can check me out on Instagram at Peterson Films. Uh, you can also follow me on my website, PetersonFilms.com. All right, so I'm going to try to plug for Brian today. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so his Twitch is. Oh, good uh, luck. By the way, X. And his Instagram is I, by the way. And it, there's a Z in there. It's, it's, it's by the way. Uh, oh yeah. It's I T Z by the underscore oh, by the way is something. I don't remember which some, one though. Some kind of underscores. Yeah. You know what? Just, just listen to one of our other episodes. <laughs> it's, a, it's in the show notes. Scroll down to the bottom. It's all down there. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. So thank you, Brian, for the art. Alex, thank you for the music. Devin, thank you for being here every week. Um, and Jackie, thanks for helping edit the podcast every week. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. Tell your mothers you love them. And also, uh, put a coat on, because it's cold out there. Oh, Brian's not here to say his 
His, you know, Brian's classic catchphrase of, yeah, I'm going to make something up on the spot. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> there we go. Brian, he's here. <laughs> What's up, guys? All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week in another episode of The Fortress of... Did I sound like Brian? Did I do good?